It's a forgetter. Yeah, it's not really the point, is it, Dad? I wonder what the council used to get it off. Is that all you can say, Tim? Do you know, it's outrageous the way they take our money and ride roughshod over us. Oh, those fat cats at the council. So we want another drink. How do you think I feel? Knowing it's my fault. Hiya. Hiya, hiya. Uh, uh, Sophie, there's something outside that I think you might want to see. Come on, come with me. Come on. Uh, Anna, we're just having a come nice, on. quiet... Come on. Come on. You okay, Soph? I can go over it, change it. I'll leave it blank if you'd rather. Oh, Craig, I love it. Thank you. I'm sure this was your idea, Tim, wasn't it? <laughs> After seeing how upset Sophie was. No, it was Anna's. Really? Where were we? Well, Craig's the one with all the talent. All I did was ask. I didn't even have to twist his arm. <laughs> you did promise him free crumble for a week. Yeah, well, I'll be paying for that. You know, if you like. Well, anyway, I better get back. Thanks, Anna. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Okay. See you yeah. later. Yeah. Are you sure you've got time for all this, Craig? It is a lot of work. Imagine if you said that about the Sistine Chapel. Not that I'm Michelangelo's biggest fan. Oh, I'm sure he'll be devastated. You know the name that Ninja Turtle had for him? You know the one with the nunchucks? <laughs> anyway, it's Craig Tinker with a spray can. It's hardly Michelangelo. I mean, no offence. Mom, Don't listen to a tink. I will always divide people. All I've What's seen. you from Roy's? My mum's cooked tea. Are you coming? It depends what she's made. Oh, I see you've been busy. Only knocking up a new painting for Maddie. You're not going to tell the council, are you, Norris? Because I don't think she could get over losing another one. Maddie'd love it, wouldn't she? Cocking the snook at the powers that be. Yeah, she would. Right, what, nobody likes? Yeah. Hey, loads of people walk around with mucky specs, you know. Excuse me, madam, can you actually see out of those bins? Oh, I could give discounts to the unemployed, the elderly, wife's sunglasses. Why don't you just concentrate on your window round? In fact, why don't you ask Tracy if her windows need doing for the opening of this new florist? Whatever you say, madam, sparkly specs. Mm. Hiya. Oh, hiya. How'd your hair done? I'll have a glass of red, please, Michelle. Large? Is it that obvious? Barlow's bunches. Tim, I'm trying to have a quiet drink here. I bet it is, isn't it? Barlow's bunches, you see, like, you know, bunches of flowers. Yeah, I get it, Tim. I just don't think anybody would call their shop that. Tracy will call it something simple, S something that sums up what she does, like flowers by Tracy. Well, they didn't call the last shop knockoff gear by Tracy. No, that's true. Ah, look, I'm not going to stop. Hey, Dad. All right, trouble. Are you going somewhere nice? Uh, no, not really. She's got a date. Really? Yeah, really. Go on, then who's the unlucky fella? Oh, did you meet him on a singles night? Um, yeah, yeah, I did, actually. Oh, that must be a relief for you. Sorry? Well, when you're a single woman, it can be very difficult to find somebody when you're your age. Oh, well, I don't know, Sally. You know, you managed to land him, didn't you? You know, once you'd made your mind up. Hey, I am here, you know. I admire you. I really do. You would have to drag me kicking and screaming before I would subject myself to that kind of humiliation. Mm. Take my advice. If you've found someone, you hold on to them. All right, do you reckon? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, OK. Right, sweetheart, I'm going. You be good. And you? Tim! Mm. See ya. Oh. I feel a lovely mum. Oh, thanks, darling. Listen, pop in tomorrow before you go to school. Bye, Sally. Mm. I'm starving. Oh, good. Got broccoli baked for tea. <laughs> it's a Jamie Oliver recipe. Well, it's adapted from, because I didn't have any almonds or cauliflower. What's in it? Well, it's sort of in the title, Broccoli Bake. You know, Jamie and I are definitely on the same page when it comes to healthy eating. Although, I must say, I'm always very surprised by him because he, he does strike you as a little bit on the common side. I don't think I'd ever eaten broccoli until I met you, love. Oh. I didn't eat an olive until I was nearly 30. I thought it was a great federate shock. Well, it's a good job your taste buds have got more sophisticated. And that needs a bit more salt. So, how's Craig? Yeah, good. The other day, right, he drew a picture of a teacher who's got that weird hair. What, that mask guy? Anyway, it was totally brilliant. It's extraordinary considering his bats. I mean, I doubt she'd know the difference between a Banksy or a Botticelli. What's Botticelli? Oh, he's a painter from the olden days. Why don't you show her that book you've got? Fifty paintings to see before you die. Mind you saying that, I was nearly dead by page six. I'll show you after tea if you like. 
In that case, I think I'll go for a pint if that's all right. We haven't finished. I'm a bit full, to be honest. That uh, Cathy, she gave me a bacon balm earlier after I gave her display cabinet going over with me, shall we? Anyway, I've, I've eaten most of it. Seconds, if you like. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Goodbye, ladies. That's really good news. What a day. How was yours? Well, you know, up and down. Up and down. Mad as night. Yeah, I didn't get it, such as it was. You want a cup of tea? Oh, do I ever. I might take it up with me for a bath. I don't think we've got a mug of that size. Please, Tim, I've had a hard day. All I want to do is slob in front of the telly and... Hi, Sally. Oh, hi, Faye. Oh, yeah, Faye's staying over. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Do you know, I don't mind having Faye for the odd night, but when you adopt a child, you have to take occasional responsibility for it. What's Anna doing? Admin. Admin? Mm. She works in a cafe. She's not running Microsoft. Pound to a penny. She's got a new fancy man over. Ah, oh, no, no, I don't think so. Well, she might be able to pull the wool over your eyes, Tim, but not mine. Oh, so this means fate is going to get shunted out every time Anna manages to lure a new fella back. I don't know who I feel more sorry for. Faye or the poor bloke who has to slip between Anna's unwashed sheets. So can she stay or what? Yes, of course she can. So, do you fancy watching a DVD, Faye, and we could get a pizza? Yeah, great. Can we have popcorn as well? Yeah, of course you can. I'll nip out to Devon's and get some shit, eh? Yeah, get me a bottle of wine and some dark chocolate. All right, don't you? So, what do you fancy watching? Not one of Dad's. I tried watching The Expendables with him the other day. Ah, oh, more like The Expendables. Have you seen them recently? Look more like Dad's army with tattoos. You know what? I'd quite like to see you again. Mamma Mia. Oh, well, that suits me. Although I don't think I've got the DVD. Oh, my mum has. Um, I'll go and get it. Oh, no, we don't want to disturb her. Actually, yeah, that'll be fine. I'll come with you. Be nice to have a catch-up with your mum. Would it really be so bad? Never bothered you before. Shh, listen. Someone's coming up. That's not someone. It's flipping Sally. Quick, quick, quick. Oh. Oh. I'm not hiding like some sort of teenager. That's exactly what you are doing. Come on, get in. Get in. Get in. Get back in. Get back in. Take them. Take them. I don't think she wants to see you tonight. She's fast with business. Tell me how much work she's done. Give loads of work on. Hi, darling. Did you forget something? Uh, we just came to find Mamma Mia. What, all three of you? Unless you're watching it. Why is the telly not on? You've always got a telly on. No, we don't. Could you get the DVD? Hard work, this admin of yours, Alan, because you do look a bit red in the face. Come on, Faye, get the phone. I'm looking. Aren't you hot? Pardon? In that blanket, that might be why you're a bit flushed. I uh, just snoop blush yourself. You don't normally wear much makeup, on special occasions. Oh, really? Can't we just download this film and leave Anna to it? Come on. You're probably watching it in bed. No! No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll get it. Well, I don't mind. No, your mum's probably hidden a surprise in there for you. She just don't want me to find a chocolate stash. She hides everything in that wardrobe. I need a drink. Oh, right, you want one? No, I'll have Bob the kettle on, no, shall I? No, I finally got some beers at home. Right, well, bye then. Come on, shift. Hey, Sammy skimmed. Haven't you switched to full fat? I've only just switched to semi. Sally, you can give her a lesson in milk tomorrow. Let's go and sort out this flipping film. Well, you eat it anyway. Well, I hate musical. We'll burst into a song mid-sentence. You've met somebody, haven't you, at this singles night? I'm, I'm just curious, because I can't imagine dating at our age, all that sexting and swiping. Well, I wouldn't know. Oh, be honest, Anna. He's in here, isn't he? Your new fella. Come out! We're not going to bite you! Have you been on the sherry? Could I have a sherry? Oh, it's lovely, all those first few dates, you know, where your knees are weak and you're <sighs> sick with nerves. Is that how you felt about Kevin? Oh, it took about ten dates for me to tolerate Kevin. I mean, he's got the most disgusting... I thought you said you were going to have a quiet night in with Izzy after you'd done your admin. Yes, I did. You're right. That's right. I did. She'll be here any minute. So off you pop, everybody. Have a lovely Come evening. On. Enjoy the film. Bye-bye. See you, Tra. Love you, Faye. Bye. Well, let me done. It's finished when it's finished with his exact words. Well, he said he'll come and fetch you. Yeah, so no peeking. Mm. See ya. Hi, 
is he? Did you have a good time last night? Oh, yeah, Ta. Three episodes of House of Cards and a dead Gregory. I love Kevin Spacey. Wouldn't put Anna down as a Kevin Spacey fan. She's not. So why was she watching House of Cards then? She won. Well, I thought you were at Anna's. No. Really? I could have sworn that you said you were going to go and see Anna. Well, then you need your ears, Justin. Why would Anna lie to us? I'm sure there's a simple explanation. I'm sure there is. She's hiding something. She had a fella around there, and it wasn't Kevin Spacey. The thing is, if you fire on them, you fire on me and all. Yeah, and me. So what are you going to do now, spray women and children? I'm 17. I mean, I could fight for my country. Pipe down, Craig. Look, mate, this bureau means a lot to people around here. Why don't you put your weapons down and go home? We were sent here with a work order. We always get the job done. One! You can't power wash innocent people. All graffiti must be removed. Two! We know what you're just doing your job, but if you could go back, explain the situation to your bosses. This isn't vandalism. This is a, a tribute to a young girl who died. <laughs> there is... An appeals procedure. Appeals? Yeah, appeals. There's always an appeal. We appeal? Yeah, sounds good. You'll have to fill out the right forms, make a case to the council. What? So we've won? This is a temporary truce. The council will consider your appeal and then make the final decision. Well, I think we might have a good case. Yeah. Well, no one's ever won an appeal since I've been working for the council. Yes, well, this will be the first. I'm watching you, Craig. <laughs> of all the people he can choose. Sorry, Kev's his own man, he can choose who he likes. Scott, he had better taste. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Anyway, I think there's something that we better do. Do you reckon it'll be safe? If we leave, I mean, you don't think they'll come back? Well, if they come back, we'll fight them again. Oh, How long? Not long. And somehow you think this is news that you shouldn't tell me? Well, it's none of my business, is it? My ex-husband and the adoptive mother of your child are getting jiggy and you think it's none of your business? £7.50, please. Well, it's probably just a flash in the pan. It won't last long. Of course it won't last long. Oh, Mum. They're totally unsuited to each other. So why are you getting yourself all steamed up, then? Because you didn't tell me. Hey, if it does work out, Anna could end up being your stepmum. We'd be like someone off Jeremy Kyle. Oh, I wonder why I think it's a disaster. Look, I am more worried about Maddie's mural. What if the council says it has to go? Well, if they want to fight, they know where to come. You think she'll be OK? I don't know. I'll tell you what. If somebody came in here and tried to snatch my hat back, well, I wouldn't go out again. All my makeup's in it. She was just lying there like a bag doll. Hiya. Oh, I've just been checking out the bistro. Leanne, were they actually trying to rob the bistro? Or were they deliberately trying to get Carla's hat back? No, they were trying to rob the place. Well, thank God we only had a few quid in the till with us being closed. To think, if she'd stayed in the factory, she'd be all right now. What was she even doing there, anyway? Did she say out to you? No, she didn't. I've already told her this to Nick. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Uh, sorry, man. It's, it's a shock. I'm... Well, Carlos had the up, and it went well. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Right, now we'll just have to wait and see. He sets the worst over with. Well, hopefully. Uh... I do think we should have a 20-mile-an-hour speed limit on this street. Well, if it had, Carla wouldn't be in hospital now, would she? What, do you think robbers would observe a speed limit? Well, speed bumps, then. Actually, Sally, that is a good idea. You should contact the council. Oh, fat lot of good they be. Have you heard what they're trying to do to Maddie's mural? No. They're trying to wash it all off if we haven't stopped them. Oh, that's awful. No, they still might be doing it. They've only put it on hold. But I am thinking of starting a petition. Oh, they're not going to listen to you. Councillors are always the same. Excuse me, Sally, I was a councillor. Yeah, but you weren't very good at it, were you? You were only in it for the perks. Um, was she really a council? Yes. Uh, so was my late husband, Alfie, before me. And he was Murph. Yeah, and Deirdre was the councillor too for a while. Blimey, sounds catching. Do you know, the highlight for me was having lunch with Prince Charles. Oh. I gave him a bush. 
Well, he was into gardening, wasn't he? Um, what was he like? Oh, he was absolutely lovely. A real gentleman, you know? I bet he kept banging on about buildings and that, didn't he? I'd hate to have lunch with the royals. Yeah, because you'd actually have to have table manners. <laughs> I reckon that Harry's a good laugh, though. I bet he'd eat chips out of a tray with ketchup. Oh. So, do you think I'm wasting my time with this petition, then, or...? Not at all, no. I'd sign it. Yeah, me too. Well, you get enough support, but it's getting the council to listen to you. That's the hard bit. Hey, maybe you should stand. We need someone on the inside. Right, who's round, is it? I never thought it would be perfect. <laughs> New territory? We've gained a few inches of garden, not colonised Australia. Just get it cut. Are you going to use that now? No, 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 no. We reckoned a bit of fresh air might do the lawnmower some good. It's just I came out here for a bit of peace and quiet. I thought as much. I knew you wouldn't be gardening, not given the state of your beds. Nice bit of kit, that's your eh? Yep. Does the job. <laughs> More than can be said for some. Tim is going to be attending to my shrubbery later. I've got to go to work in a bit, love. He never said. He never asked. What a shame. We're going to christen our new garden with a barbecue later. Are we? Yeah, it seems a pity not to. I don't know why, but there seems so much more space than there was before. It must be something to do with the new fencing. Well, maybe we'll pop round after I've been to the cab office then, eh? No, we won't. We're busy. And grab that tray. Can't be doing with the sound of a lawnmower. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, I didn't know we were having guests. Oh, well, I'm not staying. Maybe I'll get back to the pub. Don't be daft. I'm just going to take Steve upstairs and show him where the magic happens. What? Me own brew set up. Oh. oh. It's only a couple of tubs. Oh, listen to her. It's an experiment in taste. Shouldn't you be annoying the neighbours? Come on. You see, the bottom line is, blokes like me and you, we were never meant to be sophisticated modern men. No. Start trying to make yourself all emotionally available to see it a mile off. No. I don't know where to start, mate. Oh, does that lay? That's why you've got to embrace the primitive. Well, it might work for it. Yeah, seriously. Every time. You've got to think crane technique in the karate kid. If done properly, woman can no defend. What are we up to? Uh, just setting the world to rights. Really? I can barely get two words out of him these days. Thought we'd have salmon burgers for tea. I prefer beef. Yeah, well, fish is healthier. Tim, want beef? Yeah, well, Tim can want. Tim, want beef? Oh, for Pete's sake, not this nonsense again. Oh, please ignore my husband. He's very immature. Woman, get man beef! Man will get what he's given or go without. Now sit down and stop embarrassing yourself. So she's as bold as brass. Don't know if she has the nerve to show her face round here, let alone for the innocent victim. Mm. She does always have something to say for herself. Oh, she's like a dripping tap. You can hear her, but you can't turn her off. If you ask me, I thought anybody might fancy a brew. Oh. Oh, no, thank you. Ah, oh, little Jack Sparrow. I got it from the cabin. It's good, isn't it? You should see the rest of it. He's got some trousers and a little sash. Wouldn't mind one myself. Our Sal's always been partial to a man with a cutlass. Isn't that right, Sal? Tim, what are you even doing here? I wanted to come and tell you. Well, why? What's happened now? I booked us an holiday. Well, a mini holiday. Oh, I do love a mini break, me. Where to? If it involves somewhere with a foreign phrase book and a flight path, I do not want to know. Does it? I'm not saying. It's a surprise, but it's going to be dead romantic. Are you doing this to try and get round me? Yeah, is it working? Mm. Why does nobody ever do anything like that for me? We'll talk later, shall we? Are you and friends again? Maybe. But he's going begging. You can be so childish sometimes. Can I? <sighs> I was the only hen whose partner didn't come and rescue them from the police station. 
And you can imagine how traumatising that must be for a woman in my position. All right. What position is that then, love? A woman of substance. And I know this is all about Blackpool. Well, forgive me for wanting a bit of a better life. Oh, I can deal with you being a snob. I'm not a snob. I've just got ambition. People like me would be lauded in America. I'm just sick of you riding roughshod over everything that I want to do and then clicking your fingers and expecting me to come running. You know what people think, don't you? That there's cracks in our relationship. Well, they'll be right. Which is why I wanted a few days away to repair it. Repair it? What am I, a four-door hatchback? Things haven't been right for a while and you know it. I don't know that, actually. I think you're just spitting your dummy out. A few days away to put things right instead of papering over the cracks like we usually do. All right, I'm off to bed. <clears throat> OK. Hey, look, who's Bob Brown for a breakfast? Come on, yourself. Sorry I can't stop. Hey, don't get yourself arrested while I'm away, will you? Oh, it's your big day in Blackpool today, isn't it? Mm. Is it? Hey, your mum might be in misery guts, but I know how to enjoy myself. Beautiful hotel on the front, gorgeous views. Oh, he's not going anywhere. You should have seen him this morning packing his rucksack, trying to wind me up. I'm going to Blackpool. Good for you, Tim. Mm. Cheers, self. I'll try and win you a cuddly toy. Give it up, will you? I'm not falling for it. A man of your age, careering round the big one, hands in the air, laughing. People think there's something wrong with you. Who says I'm going on my own? All right, Captain Jack. Kev, ready? Oh, yes. Captain, what is going on? Well, Tim said you didn't want to go to Blackpool, so we offered us instead. Jack's dead excited. No point wasting the tickets, is there? Jack, you look really good. I wish I was coming now. Yeah, well, you've got to crack the whip for me at work. No skiving from Luke and Ty. But we're going on a ghost train. Yeah, well, I bet the ghosts will be more scared of you dressed like a big bad pirate. Oh. <laughs> Nick, just pick up, please. Are yeah, you ready? Ready? <laughs> no, should we do it on Daddy first then, eh? Mm. All right, ready, Daddy? I mean, how do you even know that they're around her? Because the last picture was posted from around here. So why don't you just ring him? Because I want to surprise him. <sighs> Mum, have the girls really got to you this much? No, I'm the egg. I just want to apologise to him. Like, I would ever believe that Kevin and Tim... Yeah, yeah. In any hurry to get home? Not really. I'd be fine somewhere for a bite. Oh, fish and chips will do me. I'm a simple girl at heart. <laughs> Doubt that very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was only feeding Kev off my fork to make Jack laugh. Yeah, but the girls in the factory have been winding her up all day about you two. I'm not bothered about that. You could pour him a beer out of your shoe if it made you happy. I just thought you'd be heartbroken that I hadn't come with you. Oh. Mum, you've seen the pictures they've posted having a laugh. Yeah, and I thought he was putting on a brave face. I was worried about you, that you'd be sat on a beach throwing pebbles into the sea, wondering where it all went wrong. Yeah, I've been in the fun fair mainly. Aren't you really making a show of yourself? I'm making a show of myself. I'm not the one playing two men and a baby in Blackpool. I could have saved myself a trip. I can't believe you're being this irrational. Well... Never like this with me. I'm offended, actually. Oh, shut up, Kevin. Where's Jack? Jack? to the road like that again. Do you hear me? Jenny, you're oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm twisting my ankle, that's all. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 
You sure you're OK? Never mind her. What about Jack? Hey, whoever told you about running away, hey? Jack! What are you doing here, Eddie? You followed him again. Hey, hey, Sophie, Sophie. She saved your brother's life. You accuse her it's of. It's all right, Johnny. No, it's not all right. I brought her because of her dad. She wanted to lay some ghosts to rest. You know, she'd be grateful rather than throwing accusations around. I am grateful. We all are. See your uncle, yeah? Yeah, I, I just want to go home. We'll get a cab to the station. Oh, my hero. <laughs> Only one hero here today. Medal. George Cross or something like that, maybe. Well, that's to do with the water. She's hardly in that league. I'm going to contact the mayor of Blackpool. Well, you don't want to be bothering the mayor. He's a very busy man. See if he wants to put up some sort of monument, a bronze statue on the North Pier, maybe. Have you been drinking? Hey, or better still, a waxwork model. They could do an action pose of a diving in front of a tram. I'm only joking. Right, come on. Let him make you. You're back. No, I'm still in London. Miss me, have you? Oh, I've been counting the days. You're looking unusually smart. Ah, thank you very much. It's a new outfit. I'm attending the patron's lunch at Weatherfield Council this afternoon in honour of Her Majesty's 90th birthday. Rather late for lunch? Well, it doesn't start till three. I only found out that I was attending yesterday evening. Turns out that the chair of Ways and Means has punched his lung plane squash. Oh, dear. Meant there was a couple of seats going begging at the top table. Every cloud, as they say. Just get out there and stall him, will you? You're just point off. You might as well just deal with it now. Craig, get out there and keep talking. It won't be loud. I'm not facing your missus. Yes, you are. I'm your boss. This is a direct order. Get out. So, Rosie and I went shopping yesterday afternoon and I jumped on a train this morning and with any luck, Tim will be in his best bib and tucker and we shall be on our way. Oh, Mrs Metcalf. Craig? Hello, Mrs Metcalf. What are you doing here? Um, the conservatory. What's about my conservatory? No, no, not your conservatory. Well, he, he must mean mine. Coming on, isn't he? Yeah. You're building a conservatory. Well, it'll be more of an orangery. It's quite a bit larger than yours. What's that? Uh, not nothing. That has been going on for quite a while. It's like living next door to a firing range. No, uh, you mustn't go in there. What have you done? Oh, hi, Sal. Um, don't worry, it's worse than it looks. I mean, not as bad. Look at the state of my conservatory. Looks more of a pool house to me. Though it smells like a saloon bar. Look, I'll get this lot shifted, I promise, OK? We haven't got time for that. Why haven't you got your suit on? Me suit? Yes. Would you at the patron's lunch in half an hour? I thought that was Monday. It's today. Didn't you get my message? Well, I, I listened to a message this morning said that we had a posh dude to go to tomorrow, yeah? Well, that's because I left it yesterday, you dozy. Have you not got a clean shirt ironed? Look, I'll, I'll go and iron you on. You go and get ready. No, we haven't got time now. I'll have to go on my own. Oh, I'm sorry, look. Sorry? This is the highlight of my political career. Everyone who's anyone is going to be there. I spent a small fortune on this outfit. I really wanted us to make a splash. Oh, you will, love, you will. I'll get this lot tidied up whilst you're away, OK? Well, you better had. Do you know, I really, I just don't know... <laughs> <laughs> So that's the big thing. That better? What do you think? I was so looking forward to that lunch. Well, there's some boiled ham in the fridge. I'm not talking about the food. I said you should have still gone. Yeah, well, I didn't have anything decent to wear, not after he wrecked my new outfit. Besides, I don't want to sit next to the lady mayoress reeking of ale. I never stopped the mayor. <coughs> Well, if you must know, he's teetotal these days. Well, so he should be, after his appearance on the news, trying to get statistically right four times. Yeah, made a proper laughing suck of himself. Yeah, and that's what you've done to me. Humiliated me in front of Yasmin. I mean, Yasmin, of all people, it'll be up and down this street by the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, just get your stuff and get out of my conservatory. He is sorry, you know. Oh, he's always sorry. He never thinks. He knew what I'd say. He just got carried away. A bit like you in this council business. You can't compare me serving the community to home brewing. 
Mum, one means a lot to you, another means a lot to him. What's the difference? Look, Mum, you've been so busy with all this council stuff that you should be glad that he's got a hobby to keep him occupied. I am. I just don't want it in the house. Why, all right, then, if you don't want it in the house, then get him a shed. A shed? A doghouse would be more useful, because that's where he'd be for the foreseeable. Besides, I don't want a shed cluttering up the garden. It'd make it look common. When I said shed, I meant more of, like, a... a summer house. A summer house? Yeah. Imagine a few climbers up here look gorgeous. No one's got one of them round here. Not even next door. Oh. Excuse me, what exactly do you think you're doing? What does it look like? I'm enjoying my day off. Successful people don't have days off. They just fit moments of leisure in between work. Well, exactly, that's what I'm doing. I'm researching new squeegees, look. <gasps> Give him a break, Mum. How can you lie there with an unbuilt summer house just a few feet away? Yeah, it's spoiling the view a bit, but I'm trying to block it out. What I meant was... Oh, you meant so. So, what are you going to do about it? Well, does it have to be built today? Yes, Tim, it does. Look, it's my shed for brewing my beer. Can I build it when I want? Are you sure that you'll be able to build it before I get back from work this afternoon? Because it's a bit of a tall order. Exactly. But if you think you can do it, well, fair enough. I am so lucky that I'm married to such a proactive husband and don't you think I don't know it? Apparently, you find more of these orangeries in Cheshire. Hale barns, places like that. What is the difference between an orangery and a conservatory anyway? Orangeries aren't as common. You better have this built before I get home from work. I can't build a shed on my own. It's a summer house. And get help if you need to. They said it should take two men three hours. Well, have a nice afternoon. from the meeting the other day. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Councillor's work never stops. Oh, Sally, I adore that blouse on. My, oh, oh, my blouse on. Ah, oh, yeah, I've had it for years. You're a bit early. Shall we bob inside? I am pretty unshockable, believe you me. Oh, I think you proved that, love. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep my eye on you. I can see that. Timothy, what is going on? Impromptu party, Sal. Fun, isn't it? What Who's the? Your mates? Uh, Timothy, how could you? Well, are you going to introduce us? This is uh, Paul and Helena, and they're from the council. Oh, we're going to have to watch our P's and Q's now, aren't we? And a Q's and P's. <laughs> yeah. Get them down your grids. Oh, look, it's Ken. His late wife was a big noise on the planning. Yeah, yeah, she certainly was. Try the beer, Sally. It's fantastic. Mm. Paul, Helena, I am so sorry about this. Look, should we retire to the bistro down the road? It's just that Timothy does a lot of charity work for underprivileged, and I'd forgotten that he was this doing... This beer's top. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't no. it? Oh, well, he's very philanthropic. We make a good team. I didn't know you were a party animal, Sally. Oh, believe me, I'm not. It's all boring. Me and Paul used to go raving in our youth. Cream, hacienda, anywhere with 300 beats per minute, four to the floor, we were there, weren't we, Helena? Oh, those were the days. <laughs> well, I'm not against clubs, per se. It's just that you'd hardly see me with a bottle of water in one hand and a whistle and a, and a smiley face on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sal. You guys want a seat? A seat? We need a dance floor. We've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Yasmin? Can't bear to see people enjoying themselves. What? Okay, so then you just click there, and this is now your keyboard. You look a bit small for my fingers. No, you'll get used to it. 
What are them at the side? These these are your apps. My apps? Mm -hmm. Dead important them, Rita. Are they? Yeah, if you don't know your apps from your elbows, you're going to be in trouble, aren't you? Very funny. What's up there? Them, they're your widgets. Although you can get cream for them, so I won't worry about that too much. Does he have an off switch? No, unfortunately. Oh, Rita. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Oh, I hope you don't mind. Sophie was just trying to bring me up to speed to the 21st century. I'm helping. Somehow I find that hard to believe. Are we doing a much in that? Yeah, well, I need to make some phone calls. Who to? To the local political parties. I need them to send me some pamphlets outlining their manifestos and policies. Well, it'll come in handy if we run out of bog roll, I suppose. Tim, this is very important. I mean, if I am serious about running for the local council at the next election, I need to know exactly which side of the fence I'm on. Well, it sounds like it'd be quicker to build a fence. What brought this on? Oh, it was just something that Norris said this afternoon. Oh, you don't want to listen to him. That way, madness lies. Trust me. Why? What did he say? Well, I was talking to him about my plans, and he started asking me about my policies and if I was going to align myself to a certain party or not. What's wrong with your alignment? Looks all right to me. Well, that's just it. I don't know. That's why I need to read up on it and do some research. I need to find out what the other parties are offering. Oh, good luck with that. What do you mean? Well, it's going to take ages to plough through all that guff, innit? Like the two of us are doing it. You what? Well, you did say you'd help me. Yeah, I know, but... <clears throat> Fine. Dennis and Maggie Thatcher. The early years. Have you got it on, Mum? Um, OK. Jenny! It is you. I'm surprised you'd show your face round here. Sally, don't go waiting in. Are you out on day release? Well, Rita's... It's not really having our business, is it, Sally? Well... <sighs> I don't think Sophie would agree with you, and Kevin definitely yeah, wouldn't. I'm just saying. After what she did, it shocked everyone. I have to say, Rita, I'm very disappointed in you. I couldn't give two hoots. Jenny has been very ill, and now she's getting better. Our families have been friends for years. How can you be so insensitive? Don't make me choose, because you have no idea what this woman has been through. I know what she's put other people through. Oh, do you know what? She's right. This was a bad idea. Look, you've been very kind, Rita, but I can't stay here. It's too soon. I'll go. Don't worry, Sally. I've got the message loud and clear. You don't have to go on my account. Look, Rita's good enough to give us some ways to live. That's fine with me. But I meant what I said. You don't go anywhere near Jack. But you can stay where you want. Sorry. Just to say, operation was a success. Hope's in remission. Oh, that's oh, wonderful oh, news. Thanks, we're really, really <laughs> chuffed yeah, out. Oh, dear. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Thanks very much. Come on, Sally, let's go. Now. Dinner was close. So she should know her for what she is, and if she doesn't, we should make her see. Look, I've got enough on my plate without fighting lost causes. Jenny's here now, and it doesn't matter how much we might like it. She'll stay as long as she wants. So what are we supposed to do? Just roll over and accept it? What else can we do, Sam? Well, everything we can to make Rita see sense. And if she won't grasp the nettle, then it's up to us. Well, why would you do that? Why would anyone? Do you what? Grasp a nettle or take the bull by its horns, for that matter. You best have steering well clear, if you ask me. Yeah, come and clean more, Paul. Look, this won't go away on its own. It's only a matter of time before Jenny shows her true colours and someone gets hurt. And that's probably going to be Rita. Morning. 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 Take care. I'll keep your chin up. I only asked you if you wanted a brew. It's only because you wanted a nosy. Yeah, because I hate being stuck in here. This is your favourite room, isn't it? Well, it is if it's an option, but not if I'm forced in here, like something out of Shawshank Redemption. <sighs> and it's very uncouth to wear a hat indoors. It's freezing in here. Can we go back to the pub? Jenny's so called Bradley there. No, thank you. <coughs> I'm a bit parched. I could do with some water. Yeah. No, I want sparkling. We haven't got any, remember, we said earlier. <sighs> yeah, well, just give us a kiss. I'm just nipping to the shop to get some biscuits. I'm having a bit of a sugar dip. If you want to get one of them candy necklaces, then you can have a nibble when you get the urge. Oh, that's all I need. Sugary spit on my decolletage. Where are you off to now? I'm going to have a nice lie down and run myself ragged all day. A lie down in the afternoon? That's not the behaviour of a winner. Oh, hi, Ken. 
I just wondered how you're getting on with my political campaign. Oh, uh, well, I haven't actually started yet. Well, I didn't really know if you intended carrying on. Well, I mean, look at this face. It's got determination written all over it. It's only three months till the elections. If we want to seize victory, we need to make a start now. In that case, we'd better schedule something in. Right. Well, Tim's at a loose end, so why don't you two make a start while I'm at work? Well, a little bit of support wouldn't go amiss. I'll bob round later and see what you both come up with. And listen, you can't hang on to that because I've got some very personal addresses. Oh, no worries. I'm sure you'll know that somebody's from the Nobodies. Oh, there you are. I can't find it anywhere. Can't I just meet in the Rovers? No. Sally? Sally? Can I have it back, please? Oh. Oh. Huh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, sir. It always helps to know the right people. Oh, no, you're welcome. I'm not sure how many of them are still active, but uh, as Arthur used to say, local politics, it's all about you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. <laughs> so he's hoping. Well, except there's a thin line between support and corruption, I suppose. I mean, look at Nixon. Corruption! How are you getting on with your campaign slogan? Well, I've had a few thoughts. Need a pal, vote for Sal, or... Sully Metcalf, it's time. I've heard that somewhere before, haven't I? No, I don't think so. It's time for what? Well... I've got one. Really? Yeah. Don't be silly, vote for Sally. Are you serious? Well, it's as good as Sal being your pal. Do you know what, Tim? Why don't I beat you in the Rovers later? You sure? Absolutely. All right, then. Money. Tough. So, just imagine an all-night bus service to and from the centre of town. I don't really go out anymore. I meet till 12 most nights. No, but if you do go out, I bet you hit the clubs. Not really. Yeah, clubbing's expensive. I'm trying to save. I've said it before, youth's wasted on the young. Uh, a late-night movie and a tub of popcorn. Oh, no. fine, whatever. Wouldn't a cheap and safe means of transport be an attractive proposition? Well, we'd probably get a cab back at that time. Steph, you're not really helping me here. Sorry. I mean, hypothetically, yes or no to my all-night bus service initiative. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. See, great idea. Just one of the many ideas I have. Thank you very much for your input. It's very much appreciated. Uh, I thought we were just chatting. Welcome to my world. OK, uh, Steph, table five? Yeah. What? Late-night bus service. People want bold thinking, Tim. Well, your husband wants feeding. I can't believe it was fully booked for a month. It's a fair local anyway. Ah, oh, good evening. Evening. What's the curve in? Date night. Yep, with a spot of canvassing. Mm. Table for two? Uh, yeah, please. please. I've made that for four. More the merrier. This way. Oh, you won't bother. I should have gone into politics years ago. You haven't won yet. Oh, so much for having faith in me. So, you gonna vote for her? Yeah, of course I am. Besides the monster raving loony guys dropped out. Mm. You kidding? Well, that's two extra votes you've got. Oh, ha, ha. <laughs> well, for your information, over-the-hill white males isn't exactly my key demographic. Oh, here we go. And what's the demographic when it's home? It's a social type. I mean, in your case, hard-working single mothers. So where are they on the league table? Well, they're, they're right up there. I mean, you're forgetting, until not so long ago, Anna and I were in the same boat. Well, not exactly the same boat, but, you know, the same stretch of ocean. Oh, so basically you're an every woman. I am, aren't I? Oh. Do you know, I think that is my greatest gift to being a potential counsellor, is my ability to be able to empathise with ordinary folk. My slogan should be, been there, done it. You'll be having T-shirts made up next. That's a fantastic idea. Oh, Sal, behave. No, 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 hold your horses. She might be onto something here. Sally, been there, done it. Yeah, it's got a great ring to it. Yeah, I can just see Tim and Kevin wearing one. Sally, been there, done it. 
very funny. <laughs> See, listening is so important. Don't you agree? No, I completely agree with you. I just don't think you know the meaning of the word. Really? Uh, anyone want pudding? Stuffed dessert. You were saying... Look, you asked me what I thought. The only thing you've talked about tonight is yourself. That's unfair, Anna. No? OK. Um, other than Sally for Prime Minister, can you tell me what else we've talked about, then? Nothing. Oh, no, 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 my mistake. You two argued over what was best, shepherd's pie or cottage pie? Shepherd's pie. Cottage pie. And guess who sat on the fence? I don't have to listen to this. Oh, no, listening's so important. Who wants an Irish coffee? And to think that I was willing to overlook your many shortcomings and invite you onto my campaign well, staff. I think we should get the bill. The only thing worse than the thought of working for you is the thought of you actually winning. Voting for you is like... like turkeys voting for Christmas. Right, this is getting out of hand. Hey, Sal. You're back early. So are you. So this is how you spend your afternoons when I'm at work, is it? Watching programmes about beavers. The giant otters. Anyway, I finished my round in record time. Yeah, well, I hope you're not skimping on your standards. You need to get that glass sparkling. If I'm going to be a local councillor, I don't want people thinking that my husband cuts corners. Ooh, heaven forbid. Hey, sarcasm is the lowest form of wit, Timothy. What's in these bags? Uh, not been that lazy, have I? Eh? I went to Freshco's and got us one of them meal deal thingies. There's fizzy wine in there and that. Oh. Well, you know, that's lovely. You know, I thought as soon as we both got back early, we could have it. Well, could you get that? Well, I can't you get it. It just looks better if I have an assistant. An assistant? Just get it. <sighs> Visit is for Councillor Metcalf. Oh, thank you, Tim. Thank you for coming. Is everything all right? No. Everything is definitely not all right. We seem to be experiencing some work-related difficulties. We are poles apart when it comes to our political persuasions. It is impossible to work with. Oh, that is rich coming from you. I'm sorry, Sally, but I think it's obvious who is best suited to lead your campaign. I quite agree. It is totally obvious that Sally and I are the better pairing. On the contrary, I think I'm the person to lead you to victory and to support your political manifesto. Well, I think you're both fit for my campaign. Oh. There's only one thing for it, isn't there? You are going to have to decide between us. Yeah. Caution to the wind and vote for Sally P. Metcalf. <laughs> That's your campaign speech. Well, I think as an improvised speech, it was, dare I say it, yes, I shall, magnificent. Mm. Well, throw caution to the wind makes me sound like a whiskey vote, and I'm anything but a whiskey vote. Oh, we? it is meant in the most positive of ways. It's to give you an air of fun. Fun? Yes. I thought an air of whimsy might go in your favour. You know, Sally Metcalf. The friend you haven't met yet. A woman of the people, so to speak. Not I like that. Huh? Don't, don't be ridiculous. Eh? The woman you haven't met yet. And what, what was that other bit about, about whimsy? Oh, honestly, Sally, you're going to look a complete fool with her by your side. Insults are the last resort of insecure people, Norris. I am not insecure. Well, please excuse me while I deliberate. What was the P, Mary? Excuse me? Sally P. Metcalf. Oh, Mother said that uh, middle initial made a lady sound more refined. I imagined it stood for Petunia. I used to have an aunt called Petunia until we lost her to the sea. She drowned? No, no, Aunt P. Joined a saltwater kayaking club, but she ran off with a gentleman 20 years a junior. All right. What are you doing in here? They're giving each other the evil eye in there. It's a well-known fact that people don't appreciate things if they obtain them easily. Hey, I'm making them sweat, Tim. Well, I wish you'd hurry up and want my house back. <clears throat> well, taste the soup. It's cold. Well, pretend. Why? So we look like a happy couple cooking together. But we never cook together. And if we did, I wouldn't wear my best shirt in the kitchen. Well, you would if you're having your photograph taken. Huh? This is daft. Well, we're selling a lifestyle, painting a picture of me that the voters can relate to. It's a pack of lies. 
Do you support my campaign or not? Yes, of course I do. All right, well, smile and taste the flipping soup. How was that? Uh, maybe we should move on to relaxing in the conservatory. Oh, right, well, we'll have to get changed then. Change it to what? Into our relaxing in the conservatory clothes. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm not sure about the beer. No, you're right. Maybe it should be a glass of chilled white wine. I like beer. I know you do, but the husband of a counsellor would more likely drink white wine. Uh, you haven't got a pet, have you? No, but we could borrow one for the photos. Everyone round here knows how animal friendly I am. We cheer up, Tim. I'm cold. Well, just pretend it's summer. Now, look outside. It's February and I'm wearing flip flops. <sighs> look, I, I'm thinking barbecue. Oh, everybody loves a barbecue. I like to cook in the kitchen and Tim likes to grill on the barbecue, the perfect couple. There's no way that I'm going outside dressed like this. We're creating an image. No, we're not. We're making it up as we go along. Well, we sometimes relax in the conservatory. No, we don't. We never relax in the conservatory and we never wear clothes like this, especially in winter. I'm not doing this. I should be working. Why don't you get some pictures of me up a ladder cleaning windows? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I I'm thinking, what about hard-working Sally relaxing in the conservatory waiting for her husband to come home? I like that. I'm having second thoughts about the white wine, though, because people oh. might think I'm a bit of a lush. Maybe it should be a smoothie, something with lime in it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like what Kevin's done with the new garage, but if it was me, I would have had it all rag-rolled. Well, the waiting area, anyway. Yeah. Do you even know what rag-rolling is? Of course I do. It was alive in the 80s. He needs to make it more feminine. I mean, women make up 40, 50, quite a lot of a percentage of the population, and garages need to be more women-friendly. Well, that's one hell of a statistic. I know. Isn't politics great? Uh, only me! Ah, Sophie, what do we owe this pleasure? Well, have you seen the Gazette? There's a gorgeous picture of you in here. Oh, I have a picture in the paper. What's it say? Let's have a look. Oh, my nose isn't that big. You, what's the article about? What's it say? It's, uh, it's New Fresco's development with a jazzy quote from you. I didn't give a quote to the Gazette. Norris Cole, her PR guru, said on her behalf... PR guru. I want one of them. It's a subject close to Mrs. Metcalf's heart because it's going to affect small businesses and her husband is a window cleaner. And that's why she opposes these new plans. Oh, until I get my hands on Norris. Norris upstairs or something? No, but her shoes are. How's the garage looking, Miss 21%? Uh, yes, it's very good, I think. What are you doing back there? Well, this is very fortuitous. What does that mean? Fortuitous, it means... Look, never mind what it means. Do you know what it means? Of course I know what it means. I think I'd go around using words incorrectly. So what were you doing back there? I was having a bit of a powwow with Liz and Michelle. How did you rear bash and go with Norris? Look, I haven't got time for tittle-tattle. I need you to do me one thing. Now, are you listening? Yeah, of course I'm listening. I need you to meet me at streetcars at a quarter to five and wear a nice shirt. Why? Where are we going? All the way to the top. Timothy, all the way to the top. Why, what is it, a night out or what? Don't be late. So... Here we go. You're a bit late. Only a little bit. Norris, I'm glad you could make it. Oh, what's going on? Why have I been summoned? Yeah, what's going on? Well, I think it was Jesus that once said when two or three people are gathered in his name, then, then it's like a church... I must ask Sophie what that quote is, because it's quite good. Remind me, Norris. Huh? Anyway, that's me. Oh, Jesus. No, doing impromptu rallies and meetings wherever I fancy. You know, Jeremy Corbyn can do it, then so can Sally Metcalf. I thought we'd go for a bevy. Why have you asked me here? Yeah, why have you asked me here? It wasn't to listen to the Sermon on the Mount, was it? I, Sally Metcalf, hereby acknowledge that in order to be taken seriously by the public and present myself as a thinker... I don't want to be a thinker, I want to be a drinker. Taxi to town, please, love. A go-getter with a dynamic and entrepreneurial husband. I'm a window cleaner. Wow. Eh? From now on, you're equal partner in streetcars. You are? <laughs> Oh, 
Plenty of sugar, please, Liz, for shock. No, uh, not for me. I'm sweet enough. I was born with a squeegee in my hand. Oh, don't talk daft. The open road, the wind on my back. Two jumpers and two pairs of my opaque tights this winter is ruined, Liz. Well, I'm not surprised. And it's warm as toast in here and all the biscuits you can eat. Yeah, but I'll lose my definition. It really is a smashing little business, and I do know Lloyd is really sorry to be selling up. Mm, but, you see, blue collar works better with the electorate. It, they, they, they like the common touch. Yeah, well, you can't get more common than a cabbie. Hey, do you want to drink this or wear it? It's just that cab driver has to be all things to all people, don't yeah, they? Is he going to be the cabbie's boss? Oh, pipe down, Norris. You've done enough harm for one day. Well, by standing up for small businesses. Hey. We're talking about me. I am not defending small businesses. Local jobs for local people. Right, now, do we think we might be done here? Because, as it happens, I do have a small business of my own to run. Yeah, I vote we reconvene. Right. Hey, hang on a minute, you two. No, don't worry. I'm sure Fat Brenda will turn up, eventually. You have turned on a sixpence. This is where you're hiding. Well, where else would I be? Down the Rotary Club. Self-pity city, I see. Did you have to be like that in front of Liz before? You're going to be working with a son. It doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Well, there's this thing that you might have heard of. It's called democracy. It means giving folk a choice and then letting them make their own minds up. Yeah, and there's this other thing called faith, where you see a person with potential and you help them out. You put your money where your mouth is. Is that a crime, believing in you? Oh, goodness me, she's going to break into song in a minute. <laughs> we could do a duet, Liz. I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. <laughs> I like your new do. <laughs> you noticed. Yeah, I noticed. It's not counting to ten. Mm. Takes years off you. Not that you needed it. Well, yeah, yeah, I like it. I'm pleased with it. I feel lighter and lighter in myself as well now that this business with streetcars is sorted. It is sorted, is it? Yeah, well, I must admit, I was very heavy-handed, Tim. I'm sorry. It's just I saw an opportunity and I went for it. You did right. Oh. <laughs> oh, there she is. We may as well get this over with. Hey, Liz, I like you do. It suits you. Oh, do you think so, really? Do it smash it. <laughs> do you mind? If it's bitter, you're after here for a long wait because Sean's still down the cellar. I am not here to drink. I hereby withdraw from your campaign. Well, you can't withdraw, because you're already sacked. And leave this for your perusal. What is it? A nomination? Yes. I'm standing against you in the forthcoming council election, seconded by... Mrs Rita Tanner. Rita, how could you? You see, I think the people of this ward deserve a better class of candidate, someone with a, a broader range of choice. And may the best man, woman, and monster raving lunatic win, Liz. How could he stand against me, the ingratitude? Well, you have just sacked him. And that's for Rita supporting him. Well, she's got to work with him, hasn't she? Oh, that's right. Take their sides. So I feel like everybody's turning against me. Even my own husband thinks I'm an interfering cow. I never said that. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe I shouldn't have got your street cars or stood for the council. Maybe the whole thing is a complete waste of time. I mean, who'd vote for me anyway? I would. Really? Yeah, of course I would. Oh. And as for street cars, I'll give it a go. Steve's got two jobs, hasn't he? Two jobs? Yeah, that's the deal. I'm not giving up my windows. All right. Fair enough. And don't you stand down, OK? Norris on the council will be like living under Stalin. <laughs> he was describing Levin Puffs. That's it. It's been driving me mad all morning. Thank you, Norris. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? My question, exactly. Have you forgotten? He's the enemy. No, Sally. And as for you, Rita, I don't know how you could betray me like that. I was caught in the middle. Well, anyway, I'm not worried because you don't stand a chance. No, I, I don't know. I mean, there may be voters out there who would prefer someone who knows that DEFRA isn't the type of hearing aid. Come on, it's time we work. Come on. Come on, we're going. The nerve of him. Any of my first morning went well. Did it? Oh, I had a staff meeting, told him what's what. Oh, that's good. Mm. What is a DEFRA, anyway? 
Yeah, of course I'm looking forward to your chocolate brownies. I've just been a bit tied up with a new taxi business, that's all. Mm -hmm. All right, well, don't say that to my wife, will you? Yeah, before Friday. OK, yeah, I'll be, I'll be there then. All right, I've got to go. Bye-bye, bye, bye. No wonder you're keen to get back to your window cleaning round. <sighs> She's 90 flaming too. Oh. The chats with me are the only contact she gets. I feel terrible. Not easy running two businesses. Mm. And I've got to sort out that rotor. You can see why those top executives burn out young. Yeah. Here, Ireland doesn't seem to do much, does she? Well, it is her afternoon off. I'm worried about her. Why? It's this Pat character. I swear he's pulling the wool over her eyes about what he gets up to. Well, after what Anna's told me about him, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. That's what I said. Mm. Hey, it's nice to get a break from Sally in her political campaigning. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> I've got no idea. She's talking it up, how well it's going or not, I don't know. Still, as long as she's happy. Talking it up, eh? Um, street cars. No, 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 that was me talking it down. Where are you going? We don't want people knowing how well it's going, do we? Norris should try even harder. Uh, and get you one in. Are you not fancy a drink or three tonight to celebrate the expansion of the Metcalf Empire, eh? Yes, as long as you're paying. Okay. And we could go for a takeaway after. Great. And you can pay for that and all. After yourself, there's millions of little bits of you everywhere. I thought you loved me. Well, I do love you, but I don't love your little bits. Look at that. Fresh goes gets the go ahead. I take it that's the new development. It's great news in itself. I mean, you know, someone's got to build this new development, aren't they? Yeah, and that someone could be you. Ah, I can see a contract in there, mate. Well, but small concerns like us out of business would I just go bankrupt. Well, I have to say, I'm all for job creation, aren't I, Tim? Mm. I just lie in bed of a night just talking about job creation. Yeah, and how much she loves it. Yeah, I can't get enough of it. Now you're talking my language, Sal. Well, I just talk plain English, no sound bites. Another voter. See you, Norris. Have you heard that couple of misfits? Got no idea about ordinary people's lives. I know how I'm going to win this election. What, bribery and corruption and free pies for everyone? I'm going to be the face of family values. Norris can't compete with that. Well, no family's perfect, Sal. You don't want anybody digging up your skeletons. I don't have any skeletons. Well, you might have. You just don't know yet. Right, I shall see you at the high-powered power. May the best man win. Or the best woman, Norris. I shall be channeling the spirit of Emmeline Panker, so think on. Do you know, you get home from an hard day at work, you bob on a onesie, ping meal, you settle down on the sofa, and then the doorbell goes, and it's one of you lot spouting all sorts of rubbish. Well, we live in a democracy. We have the right to contact the voters. Mm. You know what you are, don't you? Human spam. Come on, man. Time's the meeting. It's not a meeting, it's a debate. And they should televise it, really, and then if Norris doesn't show up, they can empty chair him. What's that? Don't you know? It's when they leave a candidate's chair empty to show that he's bottled it. What will you be debating? Well, I imagine the proposed redevelopment of Fresh Girls will be on the top of most people's agenda. What if he talks about, well, I don't know, schools? If they talk about schools, I'll talk about schools. And what would you say? Well, it depends what the question is. OK, so how do you feel about them turning Bessie Street Primary into an academy? Okay. I don't know, but if they did, what would you say? Well, what's the point of me having an opinion on something that's probably not going to happen? OK, so where do you stand on the Fresh Girls redevelopment, then? Well, on the one hand, it'll create more jobs, but on the other hand, they're looking at building it on Finbury Road, and I like that road. I used to take the girls on the swings there when they were little. And then there's the implications for smaller businesses and local shops. But that said, they are thinking about building a petrol station, which would mean that you don't have to drive all the way to the bypass to fill up. So you're sitting on the fence? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there is, because people want to know what your angle is. Oh, Tim, you're so naive sometimes. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, you can please some of the people all of the time, you can please all of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. Look what happened to him. He got shot, didn't he? Yeah, and then he got his head carved in a mountain. Well, so if you sit on the fence, you get your head carved into a mountain? Lincoln didn't sit on the fence. Oh, I'm confused. It's rhetoric, Tim. So, on a scale of... Leave it be. 
Leave her be. She's not fit to walk the streets, and I should leave her be. Soft on crime, Tim, that's what they are. Soft on crime. Good morning. Well, it would be if you were locked up. What did you say? You heard. Just ignore her, love. Yes! Love? No. Love? But it's nicer to be free, though, isn't it, Tim? Breathing the good, clean air. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. What on earth is she talking about? I've got no idea. Right, I'll pop home after work, so make sure you're there and dress smart. Ah! Refresh goes redevelopment. Proposed redevelopment, Mary. Proposed redevelopment. Well, I, for one, intend to fight it tooth and nail. I mean, why move Frescoes from its original location? And why make it 40% bigger? Those are questions, Mr Cole, and people want answers. And we certainly don't need another petrol station. Well, you say that, but there's queues for the garage that back up all the way to Weatherfield Road East. Building on the Fimbri Road site would be calamitous for the local environment, not, not to mention the children who like to play on those swings. But we're talking about the creation of somewhere in the region of 438 jobs. Including construction. The vast majority of those jobs will disappear before they've even cut the ribbon. It, 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 it's those small businesses that are being squeezed out of existence. Did you know, for every pound spent in this town, 18 pence is spent at Freshco's? Oh, that's another question, Mr Cole, and people want answers. Go on, Sal. But where are your statistics coming from? Straight off the top of his head, that's where they're coming from. I'm more than happy to quote my sources. Go on, then, quote your source. Well, in, in this case, it, it, it was my colleague. Oh, my colleague. I mean, did you hear that, everybody? Hearsay and gossip, that's where Mr Cole gets his facts from. I said 14 pence, not 18. He's exaggerating. Um, perhaps we should move on? Or doesn't the person who asked the question get a chance to speak? What about schools? Half the schools in Manchester seem to be turning into academies. Where do you stand on that? Mr Cole, after you. <laughs> schools question requiring a straightforward answer, yes or no. Yeah, but it's not as bad as it... Yes or no? It, it, it was... It was, a, it was a misunderstanding a long time ago. Right, so we'll take that as a yes, then. <clears throat> it's true. Well, yeah, but I only spent the night in a cell. I didn't go to prison. So much for family values. And you can wipe that smile off your face right now, lady. Come on. We're going. Well, I, for one, admire a man. Right, run away. I'm not running anywhere. You had that coming. In the East, they call it karma. Yeah, and round here we call it being a spiteful, vindictive cow. But I just hope the champagne and bunting are returnable. Oh, okay. Sally, come on. Hey, violence won't solve anything. Oh, it's a pity you didn't say that 25 years back, isn't it? Carrying on like that in public, you make a fine pair. She's like John Prescott in heels. Oh, no, there's a thought. I mean, is this what you want from your counsellor? See, right, it is. The questions are with this good, people might start watching it. I won't forget this. That was kind of the plan. Come on, you, home. <laughs> Sounds like uh, someone's wrong your friends. It was small There's scale. something like that out in the cabin. Why? Why have you never mentioned this to me before? Well, why would I? It was nothing. It was a long time ago. Nothing? Nothing. It's the end of my political career. That's what it is. I'm married to an anarchist. I'm not an anarchist. Well, you were. No, I wasn't. Nobody on that demo was. Well, you were angry about the poll tax. I didn't even know what the flaming thing was. I was living in London back then and there was this girl that I fancied, right? Oh, really? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Well, stop saying that. Don't make it all right. Look, she asked me if I wanted to go into town. I thought I was on a date. We'd had a few. I thought I was on a promise. The next thing, we ended up in Trafalgar Square and she's got a baraclava on and we're getting batten charged. And he went for a pint. I know it's hard to believe. Not in the slightest. Do you know, the one crumb of comfort I had was that you were standing up for something that you believed in, but no, you just after a bunk off. Oh, can't win. No. That makes two of us. It's over. Well, you can't give up on yourself now. Well, I won't have to, cos once the voters hear about it, they'll do it for me. Oh, look, you're right what you say about me. There's not much in life that I stand and fight for, but you, you're different. If you care about something, you get stuck in, and I admire that. 
as long as I'm not on the receiving end. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. I didn't mean to make you feel bad about yourself. Well, make me feel good. What now? No, I didn't mean that. I meant stand. Stand and show them what you're made of. Because if you pull out now, it won't be Norris that you let him win, but Jenny. But if you did want to make it up to me the other way, then... Shall I get your biscuit? To the victor. The yes, sport. please do, Sal. I don't want round two breaking out, not on my watch. Speak for yourself. Well, I'm not coming for a fight. Quite the opposite. I just wanted to apologise to anybody who was at the hostings tonight. I let my emotions get the better of me. But like all of you, I'm only human. I do make mistakes. Yeah, well, me and all, but you never cut me any slack. Just leave it. Yeah, well, you're selfish. I did what I did because I care about my husband and my family and this community. And sometimes those instincts can drive you to make a bad decision, like it did my husband. <laughs> Think you've been a bit hard on yourself there, Sal? I'm talking about his arrest. Tim has political convictions. Mm, they heard all about him tonight. He had principles and ideas that he was prepared to give up his liberty for. And as such, I'm proud of him. Because he follows in the footsteps of Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi. All right, Sal. Do they have window cleaning rounds and all? <laughs> Tim Metcalf was willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of other people. And I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud of that. I'm inspired by it. And if you give me this opportunity on election day, I will make any sacrifice, face any hardship in the service of the people of this great ward. Stick oh, up. Just hear me out. What you're on about, Oliver, do is listen to you banging on and ordering me about. Look, I admit I have been a bit hands on lately. Chance would be a fine thing. And I haven't been as attentive in that department as I could have been. But once this council election's all over, that'll change. Will it, though? Oh, come on, Tim. I'm not asking a lot of you. I just want to get a picture of you cleaning windows. You know, that is not the point, is it? One minute you want me to be some sort of businessman, the next minute you want me up a ladder. You talk to me like I'm some sort of trained monkey. Chuck us a banana, I'll do a funny little dance for you. Look, if you do this for me, once the council elections are over, I'll be much less of a... Nag. Tyrant. Killjoy. Yes, all right. So will you do it? OK. Right, well, hurry up, because I'm supposed to be on a cake run. All right, well, I'll get my mucky clothes on whilst you sort out the ladder. All right, that's booked in for you, Sue. Yes, well, we can't all sit around drinking all evening. Not, not when there's work to be done. A bit late for your paper round, innit? Oh, no. I meant for my campaign. Look, why don't you just accept the inevitable? What's that exactly? Well, that I've got it in the bag. Oh, yeah, you seem very confident. Well, I'm a woman. I'm married to a working-class man. And I even have a lesbian daughter. Now, what have you got? Uh, I'll tell you what I've got. I, I've got every intention of wiping that smug smile off your sanctimonious face. Good night. Well, if you're trying to put the frighteners on him, I don't think he's working on Quiet, Timothy. David said... What do you look like? We're going to vote this morning. Is there a dress code? Of course there is. The press might be there. Well, they'll be asking how Councillor Metcalf managed to bag such a hunk of a hubby, won't they? Don't call me you'll jinx me. And that's another reason why I want you to put a shirt on. We're still campaigning right up until 10 o'clock tonight. I thought I was your working-class hero. Well, you are, but we can't take our foot off the pedal. Not now. I mean, most people don't decide who they're going to vote for until they get in the booth. <sighs> don't you think you've done enough? Well, one floating voter could swing it, Tim. Oh, come on, Sal. It's in the lap of the gods. There's nothing more you can do. Oh, Tim, I don't know who I'm trying to kid. I'm not going to get on the council. Someone with proper experience will win. I'm just a joke candidate. Rubbish, you're as good as anybody else. You're a lot better than flaming Norris. Anna said that she's going to vote for you and she doesn't even like you. Really? Yeah. There are lots of people out there that would vote for you that don't like you. Well, there's a compliment in there somewhere. I left a hair here the other day, Ricky. I feel like one of them suffer, suffer what's it? 
Insufferable. The votes for women. Oh, suffragettes. Yes, yeah, suffragettes. Votes for women. Well, my woman. You gonna smash this, Sal? Oh, will you stop it? How many times are you gonna jinx it? Right, come on. You tell me what to do. I'm a suffragette, remember? Hey, up, Norris, you want to to the town hall? We've got room in the back. They'll, they'll have barely started counting yet. Well, we're making a day of it. Yeah, well, no, thank you. I shall go by the council's public transport at the appropriate time. See you in the ring, then. Would it be too flashy to order a bottle of champagne? Wait till Norris gets here. No, now, that would be gloating, Timothy. And winning is reward enough. We don't need to gloat. Tell everybody. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> everybody, meet your new councillor, <sighs> Councillor Sally Metcalf. Congratulations, Sally. Oh, thank you, Rita. I'm gobsmacked, really. <laughs> well, when you're ready to start, let me know, because I want to have a word about the recycling bins. <laughs> he's here. Be nice. It's OK, Rita. I've instructed Tim on how he's got to behave. Oh, hey, Norris, can I get you a drink? It's just a roll of the dice. Roll of the dice? Mm. I said don't gloat. I didn't say undermine the whole process. It's not luck. It's the public exercising their democratic right to have their voices heard. That's gloating. That's not gloating. That's fact. If I was gloating, I would be talking about my majority and how the mayor said he could pitch me in a golden chain one day. Oh, dear. I knew I shouldn't have come in here. Uh, no, you can't buy me a drink. I'll, I'll get my own. The golden chain, isn't that that bull and tapestry? I'm getting yours, Norris. Oh, how are an aphrodisiac? In that case, Sally Metcalf for Prime Minister. <coughs> oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. No, oh, obviously not. There you go. Oh, you shouldn't have, love. Mum, anyone that gets one over a Norris Cole deserves a reward. Well, though I do say so myself, it was a landslide victory. I couldn't be more prouder of my gorgeous wife. More proud. Hey? You couldn't be more proud. You're going to have to watch your grammar, Tim, if we're going to be attending all these functions. What, what functions? Banquets and balls and the theatre. It's going to be so much fun. Right, well, I'll leave you to it. Aren't you going to celebrate with us? Well, it looks like you two want to celebrate alone. God, I've been Now, where were we? About here, I think. <laughs> oh, don't answer it. Mm. Well, mm. I don't... <clears throat> Oh, no caller ID. It could be important. Hello, Councillor Sally Metcalf. Oh, hi, Charlotte. How nice of you to ring. Oh, yes, I'm very much looking forward to it. Oh, just hold on a minute while I look in my diary. Go upstairs. I'll be up in a minute. I thought you were coming upstairs. Yeah, well, I've got stuff to do. Can't you wait till tomorrow? No, I need to get on top of things. Yeah, well, I was hoping for that and all. Tim, I'm serious. I mean, it suddenly hit me. I'm a counsellor. I hold a position of great responsibility. You haven't even started the job yet. But I have. As soon as that result was announced, I became a politician. I need to email the rest of the council and introduce myself, work out my schedule. Oh, there's so much to do. Oh, look, even politicians need to relax, love. Yeah, well, I relax when everything's done. Can I watch Sally then? Of course you can. No, I won't say the first. <sighs> what? Nothing. Well, it must be summer, otherwise you won't be doing your best Darth Vader impression. Well, I hate to nag. Mm. I'll say hate. You promised to do the fence. I will. When? Well, it's on my to-do list. Well, you said that last week. Well, it's a very hefty list. Well, have you seen my to-do list? I didn't realise it was competition. My workload has doubled since I've become a councillor. I know, and I'm very proud of you. I've got a reputation to maintain. Sally, it's a fence. It's an eyesore, and whether you like it or not, people look up to us. Perception is everything in politics. Oh, I'll do later. Oh, thank you. Because I'd hate for a fence to divide us. It's a joke. If you say so. What exactly is that supposed to be? You're meant to be hanging out the washing, not creating modern art. I'd be quick at doing it myself. Brilliant idea. Hey, do you really think I'm not stupid that you can do it so badly? So I won't ask you to do it again. 
Look, take your time, do it properly, but quickly, because I'm going to be late for work. How can you take your time and do something quickly? Oh, for goodness sake, Tim, it's simple. Tops from the bottom and bottom. <laughs> Don't you even think about laughing. I wasn't, love. <sighs> Those flaming chickens! Come on, Sal. It's not the end of the world. They must have meant it as a gift. A gift? Do you have any idea how much these shoes cost? It's a bit of yolk. It'll come off. You didn't tell me there was a hole in the fence. Thought I did. You need to fix that immediately. Why don't you do it? Because I didn't make a hole. Neither did I. Well, one of your family must have. Look, I'm not going to debate this. Just fix it immediately. Busy man, Sal. I don't care. Get that fence fixed and keep those chickens on your own property from now on. for all this noise. I've had a very challenging day. Where did you get that? Uh, my recycling bin, as it happens. Well, our, ours was full. And I'm mending the fence, like you asked. Yeah, well, I didn't ask you to mend it with my campaign materials. It's a temporary measure. Can you believe this? Well, you did ask him to mend the fence. I'm warning you. Unmend this fence immediately. Mend the fence, unmend the fence. Make up your mind, will you? I'm not going to let this lie. Remove that placard right now or you'll regret it. Done now, Sal. I'll nip into the DIY shop when I get a chance. Oh, and when will that be? I don't know. Next week, maybe? You've started a war here and there'll only be one winner. Never guess who I There's no rush then, is there? So I've taken matters into my own hands and Jason's going to come round later and sort it out. Well, why can't he do it then? Well, because if you knock it down, Tim, that'll save time and time is money. Well, you say that now, but what about all the money I've shelled out? I paid Tyrone to treat that fence, now you want it total. Oh, just go for it, Craig. That's pathetic. You could knock the skin off a rice pudding. It's harder than it looks. It weighs a ton, this thing. Give it here, Padawan. Padawan? Hi! Oh, hi, love. Yeah. Um, Tim, please can I borrow your fancy hose pipe thing? What, me water-fed pole? That would be the one. I never usually let it out of my sight. Yes, well, the valeting man's ringing sick and it'll take me ages otherwise. Well, it's not as easy as it looks, you know. It takes probably three minutes to use that. Well, I could show her if you want. Oh, thanks, Craig. All right, go steady with it, because it's a tasty piece of kit, is it? Right, I'll swing that sledgehammer and show the fence who's boss. Have you ever your mind? Why are you trashing my garden? We're not trashing it, we're helping. Sharif said that the fence needed replacing. Mended, he said, not replaced. Oh, stop complaining. It's on its last legs. Look, if you're going to make a big hoo-ha about it, we'll go halves. Right, go for it, Tim. Oh, I'm part, Sal. Make us a couple, will you? Hey, I didn't take a day off work to wet a new hand and foot. Stop being so work shy and get on with it. I'm off to bottom my tall boy. Here, be water-fed poles in the van. I'll be me office if you need me. It's definitely not right. Sally, I'm all about precision, me. I get my measurements bang on every time. Well, I beg to differ. Sally, I'm sure if we sit down, we can... Oh, well, I'm gone a minute, will you? You nearly smashed me feet. He needs his feet, Sally. He's a working man. So, Liz? We've been a victim of foul play. Yasmin's trying to encroach. You what? She's made her garden bigger by taking some of ours. Nonsense. Well, ours does look a bit smaller, a couple of inches, maybe. A foot, at least. Trick of the light. Grand. Do you know, I've had enough of all this. I'm off home for me tea. Make sure you're back here tomorrow morning to finish the job bright and early. It's property theft, pure and simple. Rest assured, I shall be taking this to the top and having a power with the powers that be. You do know that we're never going to hear the end of this, don't you? Why are you the one sitting Oh, Sally. Her garden will be a distant memory when she's sitting in that police cell. She's only winding you up. You 
very blasé about the situation. Well, I just think this daft feud's gone on long enough. Well, it's a slippery slope. First she moves the fence, next she'll be building a three-storey concrete monstrosity that blocks out the light. No, you're getting carried away now. Struggling enough for vitamin D round here without her nicking our precious daylight. Why don't you leave it? We'll go to the Rovers. She'll be laughing on the other side of her face when I finish with her. Swift half, change the scene. Nobody messes with Councillor Sally Metcalf and lives to tell the tale. Why, who are you, Robocop? My phone and Councillor Stevens is on the planning board. I'll have that daft bat bang to rights. Sometimes I think. No. Sally, it's a few inches of land. It's the principal. Yeah, but neighbours kill each other over stuff like this, you know. Yeah, I can believe it. So why do you let it go? Yasmin is not getting away with this. Right, I'll see you later. What time are you back tonight? Same as usual. So why don't I cook you something nice, cheer you up? What, you? What do you mean, me? Well, you only usually do beans on toast. I did spag bolt all the week. Yeah, it's not exactly cordon bleu, is it? So what would be cordon... whatever? Well, I don't know. Wild salmon, cockavan. Cockavan? Right, I'll see you later. Right, I'll cook you something, yeah? Yeah, whatever. See you later. Cockavan, eh? Mm. You can't be... Oh, that was an eye-opener. Who would have thought that funding for drains would be so fascinating? You didn't cook, did you? It's ruined now. Look, if I want to get on these committees, I have to put my name forward. I need to put myself out there. No, I'm just saying that you could have rung. Well, I did. Yeah, and it was too late. I spent all day planning this, Sally. I wanted it to be something special. I'm sorry. Look, just so you know, I'm going out on Friday with Gerald Dutton from Plan M. We're going to discuss the Fresh Girls development. Oh, forget it. I'm going to put it down carefully for pints or whatever. Here we go. Hiya. Hiya. Get my text. What, the one titled Dinner with Gerald and Anne possible topics for discussion? That's the one. You even tell him what to say now. It's just an Abe memoir for when the conversation dries up. What if I don't want to go out tonight? Oh, ha, ha, very amusing. Oh, you're still not sulking, are you, about the other night? Why, what happened the other night? I cooked her a special tea and she never turned up. I was otherwise detained. Anyway, how was I supposed to know it was special, special? I mean, you are slightly prone to hyperbole. Everything with Tim is world-classed, game-changing, mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. When my Kirky wears an apron, it's always special. And he always gets mind-blowing after us, if you get me meaning. Well, I'll make it up to you. So we need to be there at six, so an iron shirt and on your best behaviour. Yes, Councillor. And a, a, a designer suit. We can't wait to meet him. <laughs> How about we do it at our place next time? We're not far. Bowden. Do you know it? Oh, I love Bowden. I, Tim and I were thinking of moving there, but Tim couldn't leave the street. I mean, that's why we live in such a small house, because we couldn't bear to live this community. But I have got a conservatory, which gives us a bit of extra space. Oh, I know. We've only got five bedrooms, and it can get ever so cramped mm. sometimes. Timothy and I were saying exactly the same thing. I mean, we could afford more, but we'd miss the cobbles. I mean, one minute... Why didn't you answer my calls? Because it was... Sulking? No. Oh, Tim, is this just because it was late for your silly chicken? It was a roast chicken with a honey and mustard glaze, which you'd know if you'd have bothered to come on. But as you said, it's not about that. I'm not that childish. Oh, it's just a coincidence, then, is it, that I missed your tea the other day, so you missed my tea today? Yeah. Ja I was mortified. I was sat there with Gerald and Anne. You should have been sat by my side, but instead I had to make excuses for where you were. That reminds me. If anybody asks you off the council, you're an antique glass. I know, I heard you. When? Oh, I went to your stupid dinner, didn't I? I had my shirt and everything. Oh, really? Yes, really, but you didn't notice because you were too busy guessing about what a successful couple we are. Can't you remember your vows? What are you talking about? Your wedding vows. You said, and I quote you, that you were going to give up trying to change me. That meant a lot to me, Sal. It meant you were going to accept me for who I am, but have you heck? You're going off on a tangent again like you always do. Look, this is not about me trying to change you. This is about you letting me down. What, I let you down? I've been sitting here with your daughter. She's all over the place. I've listened to her. I've made her a cup of tea, even made her a cheese balm. But that's not impressive, is it? Not enough for Gerald and Anne. Not enough for you. What do you mean, Sophie's all over the place? I'm fine, Dad. 
Poor Sophie. Unrequited love is just awful. How was she when she laughed? I don't know. I did my best, but Agony Ant isn't exactly my forte. She needed a mum. A winger. No, I'll leave it for tonight. Then. Where are you going? In bed. Oh, Tim, it's only let's have a cuppa. No, you're all right. Oh, Tim, look, I've said I'm sorry. I was just upset that you didn't come for the dinner, but then when you've explained it all, it's fine. Well, it's not fine with me. And actually, you haven't apologised. OK, I'm sorry. So you're going to tell your new snooty friends the truth now, aren't you? You're going to tell them what I really do for a living? Oh, for goodness sake, it's just a few fibs, that's all. You made me sound like Alan Sugar. Well, now you're exaggerating. Admit it, I'm an embarrassment, aren't I? No, of course you're not. It was just a bit of embellishment. It can't do any harm, can it? Well, it's made me realise a few things. Listening to you really enough, all that guff about Timothy, your perfect man. Total opposite to me, isn't he? That could be you if you tried. Oh, you're unbelievable. Look, Tim, I've got responsibilities, people who need me. I have to impress. I can really make a difference. Sal, you're a local councillor, not Barack Obama. You should start thinking a bit more close to home when you're talking about responsibilities. Some of us little people need you. Where are you going? You're right, it's early. Last order's in for ages. Tim! No, Sal. Like yesterday and the day before. Well, I got waylaid. Waylaid? It'll be on your empty tomb. He would have been here, but he got waylaid. Well, I don't suppose Timothy would have got waylaid, would he? He'd have chucked him through the letterboxes from the back seat of his jag. How many more times? I was just bigging you up. Well, so you admit it, I'm not good enough then. Do you know what? I'll deliver the leaflets, cos at that way I know it'll get done. No, I'll do it. And just make sure you do, cos this meeting's tonight and it's very important. Yeah, unlike me. That development is going to affect a lot of people. So vote against it. Why bother with a meeting? Because it's going to create jobs. And I've seen the plans. There are a lot of windows. Well, I don't get out of bed unless it's antique glass, remember? Look, it's an opportunity, but obviously I can't be influenced by that. I need to listen to my constituents. Ah, morning, love. Morning. Here, whatever brand of coffee you're drinking, you should change it. It's not cutting it, is it? I'm fine, Tim. Oh, you don't look it. Yeah, well, basically, like, Kaz has had an accident and she's coming home and Kate wants her to stay with her while she recovers. Oh, I thought they'd... Yeah, I know, they have. But Kate still wants her to stay with her. What, and you think that might bring them back together? Yeah, I could see how you could be worried about that. No, Tim, I want them to get back together. I want Kate to be happy and I want Kaz to be OK, all right? What? Just deliver the leaflets. <laughs> you know, I knew I'd find you in here. Hi, love. Mm. How did the meeting go? Oh, yeah, like you care. You swore you'd deliver them leaflets for me. What leaflets? The ones publicising the meeting for the new Freshco store. Sorry, love, I had to help Liz put up the banners for Michelle's party. All oh, right, and given the opportunity of, of supporting your wife or getting a couple of free beers from here, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? My client chooses not to answer. I had to get Jason's pal to do it in the end. Who, Pat? Pat, yeah. And he wouldn't take no for an answer. He was very helpful, unlike some. So how did it go? Sold. I mean, somebody broke into the community centre and they trashed it. There's graffiti all over the walls. It's terrible. No. Yes. Yasmin's in bits. She would have had something to cry about and all if she walked in on them. It's a good job Pat was there. Whoa, well, hang on. So, so Pat was at the community centre? Yeah, he was walking past. I mean, he's there now fixing the door. Right, come on. You can let me a brew. Oh, I'll just let me a pint. You will not. Home now. See you then. Yeah, yeah, see ya. Well, if the meeting didn't happen, it doesn't matter that I didn't deliver the leaflets, does it? Do you know, I can't believe you're putting that forward as a defence. I'm just saying, you can't deny it. It's a fact, so. Yeah, well, I'll tell you another fact. My pyjamas are stopping on tonight. Why don't you put the kettle on? Love? Right? Hey, what are you doing sat out here? Oh, I'm just having a little think to myself. What about? No, oh, nothing. It's fine, don't worry. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir, but that horse has already bolted. Is this about Kate? Yeah, she's, um... She said that we can't be friends anymore. What? Yeah, she don't want to upset Kaz. Oh, but that's ridiculous. You've been such good friends. You can't give it up all for the sake of a daft kiss. Yeah, well, one daft kiss nearly ruined you and Tim, didn't it? Yeah, and what a mistake that would have been. But I'll take your point. I have just made an absolute mess of everything, Mum. Oh, Sophie, come on, chin up. I mean, 
me and Tim sorted everything out, and we're on good terms with your dad. There's no reason why you can't do the same. You, Kate, and Kaz. Hey, how tall are you? A bit rude. Why is that rude? Well, I might have a complex about it. Have you? Oh, sorry. No, but you shouldn't make assumptions. Wouldn't dream about pointing out how small you are, would I? Oh, my parcel's good old Rosie. Well, everybody's small compared to you. Then you're just sign. Oh. You seen that on the side? Hey. Eh? Casserole dish. Gail bobbed it round thinking it was mine. It's Yasmin's. I said I'd have a scuffed casserole dish. It's offensive. See ya. Sorry you're so tall. <sighs> What's all this tat you've ordered, then? Oh, I just wanted a few bits and bobs for the through lounge, and Rosie was doing this amazing lingerie photo shoot. She's getting paid a fortune for it, so... She said she'd treat me to a few bits from this little bijou place in London. All right. Oh, what a heavenly throw! Do you know, Rosie knows a shop opportunity when she sees one. What's minging, is that? That's not minging, Tim. That is sophisticated. I mean, Rosie lives in a flat on the King's Road. Yeah, even I know where that is. I mean, strictly on Trinu, it's the King's Road in Nunhead, but nobody needs to know that. Can you bob that back? Bob what back? That casserole dish. Yasmin's. It's making me feel uncomfortable. Will you stop slagging it off? It's identical to yours. That's not identical to mine. Well, it's the same type and the same colour. Well, it's the same everything, but mine doesn't have scratches on it. Oh, forget it. Just chuck it in the bin. No, it will not. There's nothing wrong with it. And yes, I will bob it back and I'll invite her for drinks tomorrow night. You wouldn't dare. If you value your life, you want. Watch me. Hmm? What did I say to you? Oh. My husband informs me that you didn't take a parcel in for me today. Yes, I mean, please, I'm up to my eyes in council business. Don't you believe me? But apparently you had deliveries of your own. Well, I've had a plethora of presents delivered today from my daughter in London. I had a card through my litter box. Oh, I bet that was the highlight of your day. Do you enjoy embarrassing me? Shush, Sharif. Oh, don't worry, Sharif. The only person she's embarrassing is herself. Anyway, what did you order, dear? Not that it's any of your business, but it was just a little something to brighten up my sofa. Oh, well, it certainly needs that. But as I said to your husband earlier on, the only deliveries of parcels I've had are my own. Looking forward to her drinks tomorrow. <laughs> you right, kids? Actually, I'm not sure about tomorrow. I think I'm coming down with something. Well, what's that hypochondria? I'm feeling quite bilious. You look remarkably bilious. No, we are going to do this. See you tomorrow. So what are we having? Well, I've looked to all of Jamie's and all of Nigella's, but I've settled with something of Gordon's. Oh, Shell can't stand him. Too shouty. Yeah, but he is the man you want in an emergency, isn't he? Well, I've a few neighbours around, though. Yeah, but do you think she's going to see it like that? Oh, no, to Yasmin. This is an opportunity to trip me up, criticise my canapé, sneer at my smorgasbord. You what? Oh, she'll be laughing on the other side of her face when she tastes Gordon's mini tuna fish cakes. Although, to be honest, after the way she was so snotty about that parcel yesterday, I can't promise they're going to be made with love. Hey, tuna fish cakes, they sound nice, don't they? Many. Mm. Hey, it's good job I'm not vegetarian. <sighs> you have to spoil everything, don't you? Why? What, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, there's no point trying to understand me. Oh, you really shouldn't have. Nonsense. Anyway, I thought it might help. Brighten the place up a bit. Oh. Sally likes flowers, don't you, love? Yes, yes, I do. That's so does Yasmin, and so she keeps telling me. Yeah, it's funny, that, isn't it? <laughs> it's lovely, Sally. Oh, thank you, Alia. Considering it's such a small space. Right, can I get you a drink? Oh, sorry, you don't, dear. No, I'm so only tempted. Mm. We've got plenty of non-alcoholic drinks. We've got pomegranate juice and cranberry juice. Why don't I help? Uh, let me. I'd forgotten you had double glazing, too. I wouldn't be without it. Environmentally friendly, of course. Absolutely. Some people don't think it's important, but... No, exactly. It's like on the council. I'm trying to spearhead this campaign on sustainability, but dealing with some people, honestly, it's like they're back in the dark ages. I mean, hello? Global warming, people? Yes, well, not everyone has the foresight required. Thank you, Yasmin. In fact, 
I'm in the process of developing a sustainability project at the community center. Well, if you ever need any help. Ah, thank you. Ah, Tim, get Yasmin some nibbles. Uh, by the way, do you eat fish? Yes, we do. I knew it. Do you know, I said to Tim, I'm sure I've seen Sharif with a tuna baked potato. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 Well, listen. Ramsey. Yeah, his recipe, not ready made. That's means right. The word delicious. Who knew you were so talented? Well, one does one's best. One, one has to entertain so much. <laughs> In fact, I'm having a little soiree tomorrow for some council colleagues, if you're free. Really? Yes, I, I think we are. That would be. Uh, so, so, where did where did you get that? Oh, do you like it? Yes, I like it very much, which is why I ordered it for my orangery. Why, exactly the same. Well, it's probably a really popular design. Only it never arrived. Hang on a minute, you're not suggesting... Of course she's not. That is exactly what I am suggesting. Well, there must have been a bit of a misunderstanding. You see, the thing is... I'm sure your council friends won't want to be seen lounging on stolen goods at your little soiree. How dare you? And if you want to find out how to make proper fish cakes, I shall be serving them to my guests tomorrow evening. What guests? At our drinks party. Come on, we're leaving. Jack, would you, that is my... But... I thought you'd be really... Oh, that's terrific, Martin. I'm delighted that you and Terence can attend my little soiree. Oh, it'll be lovely to see you there. You okay, mate? Oh, it's a daft question, sorry. Listen, you did good, you know that, don't you? They arrested that lowlife that attacked Kylie, and that's down to you. Right, come on, nothing like a bit of back-breaking work to take your mind off things. Shall I get the buckets then? No, get them Swedish from under the sink. Super! I shall see you then. Bye. Bye. Why are you talking like you got half a dozen plums stuffed in your gob? Because I have just bagged the mayor of Weatherfield and his partner. Suck on that, Yasmin Nazir. Right, we're off to do the wind around. I haven't got time for that. This house needs bottoming before this party. Oh, don't look at me. That's women's work, isn't it, Craig? Oh, come on, get stuck in. Craig, would you help him? He'll pay extra. OK. The mayor and his partner. Gonna have to take my nibbles up a notch. It's too last minute. Make the house look cheery and festive. <laughs> it's gonna take a bit more than a bit of bunting to get your party off with a swing. Maybe you could run some up for me? Oh, it's a bit late for all that. And I've not got time. Oh, shame. You're going to have to win over your guests with your sparkling repartee. Oh, dear. Have you had to resort to shop-bought food? All mine is homemade. Well, mine was made by master chefs in the most exclusive deli in Weatherfield. Yeah, we pretty much had to take out a second mortgage to pay for it and all. But, of course, money is no object when hosting a soiree. Some of us think that ostentatious displays of wealth are common. It's enough, Yasmin. Bob that lot in the fridge, Tim, will you? All right, can we get to the feeling comes back at the end first? But you can't blame me for pushing the boat out. The mayor and his partner are used to exclusive dining. The mayor is small fry when compared to my guest of honour. Bahin Iqbal. Sorry, who? Bahin is the president of the Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders. If this was a game of top trumps, I think we all know who'd win. Ian and Peas. Oh, Ian Barsi. Yes. Ah. Isn't that well, carpet come up lovely? It's as good as new. Yeah. Do you know, do you think it's a bit late to ask everybody to take their shoes off? Do not. I don't normally like this bitty food, but these uh, canapes are very Moorish. So we are. No, I can't be doing with all this. I'm more a pie and chip sort of bloke, you know. I was hoping that Audrey would be here. I haven't seen her since Kylie passed away. Oh, you should be feeling very sensible. Oh, me neither. But sometimes a change of scenery can do you good. Sally said it. It's good to do stuff. Keep your shots in. Mm. Don't you know? Well, there's a method in her madness, isn't there? Getting you to do all this uh, waiting on everybody hand and foot. Do you know, I'm really fretting about this crock and boosh. I mean, ideally, I'd like to unveil it, create a spectacle. Right. I've got nothing to unveil it with. Why don't you use a tea towel? 
A tea towel, he says. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> Martin, lovely to see you. Where's Terence? Oh, he won't be a minute. Now, I hope you don't mind. We've brought another guest. Oh, well, the more the merrier. It's our little one, Barry. He's just outside answering a call of nature. <laughs> oh. uh, so, everybody, uh, this is Martin, and he's the mayor of Weatherfield, and this is his partner, Terence. And this is Barry. Oh. And this is Timothy. <laughs> I don't know whether I should bow or curtsy or what. <laughs> He's lovely. What breed is he? Cockapoo. We got him from Weatherfield Dog Shelter. Turned our lives around, he has. I'm not that keen on dogs. They bring out the allergies in me. Well, there's an antihistamine in the tub, boy. Yeah, we were after a bulldog, something a bit more butch, but what can you do? <laughs> it was love at first sight. It's adorable. <laughs> So, uh, Craig, would you like to take the coats? Oh. And make sure you wash your hands before handling the food. Is this your son? Oh! <laughs> no. Craig! His staff. Oh. Someone should be on standby with a fire extinguisher or a wet blanket. Nothing. Terence wants us to adopt a pomper poo as well, but I don't think... Barry likes to share. Yeah, I did think about getting a companion for Eccles, but uh, that I thought better of it. Yeah. Looks like he's got a mullet. Oh, Craig, get the door. You don't take out one of them man bags, do you? It'd be deplorable. This beer's fabulous, Sal. You and Tim should set up a microbrewery. Will you please turn the music down? My guests cannot hear themselves think. Why would you want to think? It's a party. That's the last thing you should be doing. Oh, Tim? Put that 70s disco mix on, I feel like a bop. Do you mind? Hey, Norris, you're gonna shake your booty? <laughs> no, certainly I'm not, but I could dance you off the floor any day of the week. Put your money where your mouth is, no that. Oh, I love this one. Come on, sir. <laughs> Where's Barry? 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 Here in all innocence for uh, a quiet chat and a bit of finger food, and we end up trolling the streets. I'm sure he'll come back in his own good time. He'll be around, sat there watching us, Barry. laughing. Daryl's gone missing loads of times. He's usually still in the house. I knew we should have gotten that GPS tracker system. <laughs> Try not to panic. He's got our phone number on his collar. It's been microchipped. Right, Ken, Norris and Freddie, your Kitchener Street. You two go back inside, just in case he turns up. Sharif and Tim, Maudsley Street. Barry! Oh, I hope you are happy with yourself. This is all your fault. Don't go on, Sally. I didn't do it on purpose. It doesn't matter if you did or you didn't. Barry has still gone AWOL. I'm here for, for my constituents. Pleasure doing business with you. Bye. What's he doing here? I oh, council business. Oh, when he put me shelves up. Well, I was going to do that. When? The end of never. Well, he didn't have any tools with him. He used yours. He used my tools? Never seen you use them. All right, so what did, uh, what did Pat want? And what's it got to do with you? But he, he just put up her shelves using my tools. You never, ever let another man put his hands on your tools, ever. It's not right. Oh, get over it. Thanks to Pat Phelan, I now have a proper office. If it keeps the planners happy and you and Jason happy, which reminds me. Councillor Mekov, can I grab 10 minutes of your time, please, to talk about the Calcutta Street development? Oh, Pat, if only I had 10 minutes. You've barely got time for me, and I'm her husband. Look at you. Ah. Some young people with downs, some with other disabilities. Yeah, and they're all going to be turfed out so that Pat can convert me into luxury flats and his mate can make a killing. Are you sure this is a project you want to put your name to? Well, there must be loads of halls for her in Weatherfield. Why don't you ask Yasmin? She'll give you a discount on the community centre. Oak Hill Fencing Club. Under 11, Dodge Balls, the Feral Folk Choir. All 60 of them. Mm. It's not just a building they're taking, so. Oh. I just need five minutes of your time. Well, can't it wait? I'm really sorry. I'm just so fired up. Go on, then. Come on through, Alex. I've been speaking to Alex here. Don't trust him, Alex. Tim, pipe down. This is council business. It's about these clubs. 
Now, I think I've found somewhere that we can rehouse them, somewhere that's much better than where they are now, and for the same price. But then me and Alex got to talking. We hit upon this idea. Would you like to say, Alex? No, you say it. OK. I've been hands-off so far as the planning goes. I'm more about... I'm more about people than I am about buildings, so... Right. No, I really want this development to be special. And not just in terms of affordability. I want a few of these flats to be specifically adapted for people like Alex. Go on. OK, so I'm thinking five flats on the ground floor for easier accessibility. And you can wire the doorways to accommodate the wheelchairs and emergency alarms in all of them. Is that something you think you and your colleagues could support? Well, it's interesting. It's very interesting. In fact, I think it's a great idea. Well, well done, Alex. Thank you. Apparently, Mr. Connor docked their overtime. And of course, you can hardly blame him. Well, I think it's petty. Are you being argumentative again? No, I'm serious. Of course, they're only your friends and neighbours. Who cares if they get exploited and ripped up? This is not the time or the place. Well, you're finding your new busy mate, might hear you. I'm only doing my job. No, your job is to serve your community. That's not fair, Tim. I'm not the enemy. No, no, you're not. He is. I just wish that you'd see it. Mm. Sounds like you've had quite a day. Do you know, I don't know what came over me. Right, you're just being you. Look, I was out of order when I said that you didn't care about your friends. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Doesn't mean to say I'm wrong about Pat, though. <sighs> Should we just agree to disagree and leave it at that? All right, fair enough. After me, Dad. She thought it was funny. But it wasn't. He's not a rat. I don't know what he is, because she never gave me the chance to find out. Stay one more night, but he'll have to move on. Where to? Well, I don't know. He can go in a BB. &B. What are the wages I pay him? You don't want him on the street. Well, look, he's got a perfectly good home over the road. Well, it's got a roof over his head. You know, I can't believe I've allowed a rat into my house. You might, Kev. Look, I don't like rats either, but it's not like it's sitting on the sofa reading the paper, is it? It's in the conservatory locked up in a cage. I can't chuck him outside with me, mate. Honey, pal. All right. Oh, that's good, Craig. Isn't it? Can't remember the last time I came down and my breakfast was on the table. No, neither can I. Have you forgotten glasses for the orange juice? Oh, I'll get them. Um, no. No, um, I'll get them. You stay where you are. You've done oh. enough. Ah! 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 What's up? I stood my toe, so... Ah! Ah! Glasses! Oh, glasses, yeah. Glasses. Ah, fresh. Uh, fresh. Be... Yeah, fresh. Fresh? Fresh? Yeah, these have just been washed. Don't matter the clock, though, can you? Don't matter how much you want. Hiya. Sunny oh, me. I love you. Give you, you, you fancy sunny? Uh, no, I'm fine, thanks. Hi, Craig. Hi. Your mum is really missing you, you know. I know. And me and Tim have been talking about it, and I think it'd be good to sort things out. And if you could help us, I mean, that'd be great. Yeah, of course I'll help you. I don't know what you've said, but well done. welcome you all to this mediation session. This is a chance for everyone to have their say. And more important than talking, it's about listening. And who knows, we might be able to resolve a few things. Beth and Craig can sit down and, and smoke a pipe of peace. Or eat a piece of pineapple. How do you know about that? I went to the house and I saw her. Pineapple? It's his favourite. And how did that pineapple make you feel? Well, it, it made me realise everything you do for me that I just take for granted. And I know you've always tried to do what's best for me. I have. Supported me. And I know it must not be easy being a parent, and I've never really thought about that before. We all make mistakes.
Where is he? Oh, he's gone back to ours. He wanted a bit of time to himself. Is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. Not, mm. not if Daryl's filling his head full of rubbish. Look, he didn't hear this from me, but he decided not to go and see his dad, OK? Are you sure? Mm. See? Everything will get back to normal soon. It's just you and me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the only friend I can ever properly trust. Do you know what? I love you. And I'd do anything for you. No matter what. Whoa! What's all that noise? Craig? Cage door's open. Oh, never mind the cage door. Look at the state of him. He's three sheets to the wind. Oh, there's an animal loose in this house. Oh, for goodness sake, Tim, help me oh. get him back on his feet. It could be anywhere. Are you OK? Oh, I don't feel well. Don't do it, Craig. <laughs> oh, do something. Oh. Sorry. Right, that's it. First thing in the morning, he's going, and the rats. No excuses. Ugh. Cheers. Start. Well, lucky for you, I happen to be free this afternoon. Uh. What? Well, I mean, it's completely up to you, but I think there should be a policy of taking on the best person for the job, not whoever happens to walk through the door. I mean, for instance, some people aren't very good with the general public. Hang on, I've been here since the flaming thing opened. I mean, I wrote the book on customer satisfaction. Well, I'm sorry, Eileen. Like it or loathe it, we live in a meritocracy, and I, for one, think the best man or woman should win. Actually, I think Sally's got a point. You what? Yeah, so why don't you go away? Come back at half past four, we'll go through a series of questions and have a proper interview, OK? So I trained you and now you're going to question me on how to run the place? Correct. On a little tip, remember, the boss is always right. 4.30, all right? Time for what, right? Let me share what you're having. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, Kevin. Uh, white wine, please. Yeah, I'll get a pint, please, mate. We're celebrating. Are we? Are you? What are you celebrating? Mum and Faye moving in with Kev. She'll be here in a minute. Oh, that's great news. Well yeah. done, mate. Thank you, oh, well, I hope you'll be very happy. Yeah. Thank you. To Kevin and Anna. Hey. Kevin, Kevin and, and Anna. Anna. Kevin and Anna. Hey. Cheers, mate. Cheers. My heart is still going like the clappers. Mine too. Oh, I've done my shoulder in. I'm out of the muscle. Oh, well, you weren't lifting a car. Mum. Oh, Craigie. Oh, I'm so sorry. I saw all the stuff outside. I was worried about you. Yeah, she's indestructible, your mum. Eh, uh, I won't say indestructible. <laughs> How did it go in car? Oh, great, yeah, yeah, they're both great. You were a lot more used than me. Hey, Kyla would have been proud of the pair here, right? Oh, I'm really, really sorry. I had to go do my community thing at the Red Wreck and then Mary had this crazy idea. I don't care. I've missed you. Oh, I've missed you too. Can I come home? You don't have to ask. Oh, come on, better grab a bit. Well enough here. Yeah. Same again. No, sir. Stressed enough as it is without overdosing on coffee as well. You look so tired, Kevin. <sighs> Barely slept last night. Anna's a tough one. She'll be all right. Gonna be scarred for life, though, ain't she? You know, doctors are amazing these days. The things they can do. Yeah, I know. Did they say when they were going to be taking her off the ventilator? Sometime this afternoon. I'll go to the hospital with you if you want. You don't have to do that. Yeah, well, I know I don't. What about work? Well, they can manage without me. Oh, you're saying I can't? No, I'm just saying it might be a good idea to have somebody with you when she wakes up. Thanks. Are you going to see your mum? Yeah, me and Kevin are going to go in a little while. I'll come with you. I don't think that's a good idea, love. But I want to see you. Listen, love, your mum's going to be pretty confused when she wakes up. Why don't we see how she's getting on? I can take you up there later. OK. OK? So how about me and you go and get some breakfast? Give Seb a call, see what he's up to. Yeah, sure. 
Let us know if there's any news, won't you? Yeah. Mm, tell her we'll love her, will you? I think she knows that already, but... Yeah, I'll tell her. What, to clean up other people's cruddy mop? No, to get gossip for me. So what else did you hear? Adam just on his phone. What, getting someone to see Maria? I thought you thought she was innocent. So what happened? But, whoa, what happened to them mats? Get them vacuumed properly. Just supervising self. Yeah, and make sure you do a full hour affair. I'll be checking up with Kevin. How long is this punishment going to go on for? It was one mobile phone I took. It wasn't like I was going to keep it. It's going to go on for a lot longer with that attitude, young lady. But you sound like you've not even done anything wrong. I think I've been cleaning cars long enough now. But Dad only wants me here so I can see things like Aiden. So see things like big black clouds gathering across the sky and getting a bit of fresh air in your lungs and spending some time away from those screens that you young uns are always on. Bit of time in the world. Oh, I love it when you're passionate about something. Oh, the great outdoors, Sal. <gasps> I'm all over it. You've just given me a great idea. What's that? What is it? Sal, what is it? Tim, get in. Well, I promised Rita I'd polish her features. That window box thingy with the two R's. She actually asked me if I'd do a once-over of her R's. Didn't know where to look. Just get in. I've got a little surprise for you. You'll like it. All right. You got me thinking this morning, you know, when you were talking about outdoors, al fresco, the elements. Whose is that scarf? It's for you. And it's not a scarf. It's a blindfold. I stash me ladders. Breeze on your skin, that sense of outdoor adventure. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got any more clues? Well, it's something we could do at home in our back garden, but here it's much more exciting. There's more space, we can try different things, more variations. What, more, more than blindfolds? Oh, what's that? Is that keys? Ooh, nothing wrong with your hearing. Oh, is it handcuffs? Course. It's allotments. I had to pull a lot of strings. I'm glad you're excited. Do you know, I can't wait for harvesting. Right, that's for the shed. See you later. But Maria didn't do this. <laughs> That's all. I like to call it a spade. Listen, I was thinking, right, we could extend this shed, because if we push this wall back two foot, we could put an hammock up. I don't think so, Tim. This is a place of industry, of hard graft. I brought Faye here to show her where she's going to be doing a punishment hours from now on. There's no point washing them cars, just get dirty again. This is far more productive. I know you're just being grounded. Would you like to make the first cut in the ground, Faye? You're joking. Isn't it normally a VIP that does that? The mayor or something? Come on, Councillor Metcalf. Oh. Get your camera out. I officially open this allotment. Ah! Good job we're doing it back the press, isn't it? Oh, up you get. I've got the wrong shoes on. Right. I'll see you tonight. And you can come back after school, young lady. Make some progress, Tim. Lunch time, see how you're getting on. Check up on me, you mean? No, of course not. I need to be 100% focused today, love. I don't need any distractions. Oh, I just think next summer I'll be popping down there for picnic lunches. Picnics at the allotment? Yeah, homemade bread, salads plucked fresh from the ground. <laughs> A bit like the good life. What do you think, Faye? Me and Sal, a couple of old hippies leaving off the land? Well, as long as I don't have to be involved. Oh, you'll be involved, all right. You should be down there every night after school since you've been grounded. Anyway, like I said, I need to be 100% committed, so I'll see you later. Mm, see you later. Bye. What have you got in the. Mm. Mm. Oh. I've been at the allotment all day, digging it over, getting ready for planting in the spring. 
I've never been one for gardening, me. Especially vegetables. What's the point when fresh goes is down the road? You can't beat growing them with your own fair hand. It's nice to know that you've vegged the fruit of your own labour. You know, I thought I might find you in here. Mm. Hey, hang on a minute. He's been breaking his back all day. What, you finished it? Of course I have, love. Really? Hmm. Go up and have a look if you want. Oh, that won't be necessary. I'm so proud of you, Tim. White wine for sale, please. Room for another back. Taking the day off. You'll have me to deal with, all right? Sorry. Yes. What's that? Oh, Andy has been with Gail today. They scattered Michael's ashes. Oh. Sounds like a fun afternoon. Yeah, well, at least with them not getting wed today, I saved me the social embarrassment of giving them a pedestal mat as a gift. What's the matter with you? You've been pick, 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 pick all afternoon. No, it's just weddings, you know. What? Well, usually before a wedding, we... Yeah. What do you mean, our traditional wedding bunker? Shh. I don't want the whole street knowing about our sex life. Well, we'll have to keep the windows shut, won't we? Come on. Come on. It comes round, and we haven't got a clue what happened to him. Well... What? I saw Kev heading towards the yard yesterday, around about the time that it happened. Really? Yeah, he looked in a bit of a state. But why? I didn't ask. But they've got history, haven't they? Their man around Pat. Makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> why couldn't we have just left it in the van? I've already dropped one telly today. I'm not going to get another one nicked. I'm not after slogging on the shop for an hour. All right, cheers. Oh, Sal! Is this a bad time? No, no, no. I was just about to move it, love. Oh, no. I'll leave it there now. Oh, I can't believe it. 55 inches. Of pure viewing pleasure. Yeah, yeah, it oh, is. Is it smart? The telly is, yeah. Well, no, but the thing is, Sally... Oh, Tim, am I the luckiest <laughs> woman in the world or what? I mean, you must have read my mind about changing that telly. <laughs> yeah, no, but I feel really bad now, cos... Oh, no, don't worry about spoiling the surprise. I could not be happier, I mean, compared to what I thought I was getting. What was that? Well, I went up to the loft to get some replacement bulbs for the tree and there was this hideous globe up there. Oh, no, it's, it's dead nice, is that, Sal? It's hand handcrafted by um, my, my craftsman in Shan Shandong. Oh, come on, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. Still, Phil, be pleased. Right, I'll put the kettle on while you set this up. Might as well make the most of it now the cat's out the bag. Mm. Well, that busman's flaming holiday. Chips and gravy or chips and curry sauce? Does it matter? On a day like today, I should be blasting drug pushers. Nice. On a new laptop. See, nobody else on this street's been targeted. It's the politics of envy. Hey, I missed a bit. Almost wages on ties. Charity begins at home. Right, we need to get back. We've recorded a little something on our new smart TV. <laughs> You can search for films by category. On your new what? Oh, you're surprised. I was surprised. He's not known for his generosity. Still, it's 55 inches. Of pure viewing pleasure. Oh, he let you into the secret then, did he? What secret? What saw you? Um, it, it's a bit complicated. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tufty! Rosie bought me that when she was little. I'll get you another one. <laughs> what kind of a fella are you, <laughs> eh? Not a liar, not a loser, and not a boozer. Me neither. The kind who stick around and be a real dad. Nick! <laughs> Stop me the pen! Yeah. You're playing at! See, if we'd stayed and watched Chennai Express for the millionth time, you'd have missed all the excitement. <sighs> no need. My cousin let me her copy. <laughs> <laughs> you can right. send him a bill in the post. Better still, he can take it out of his wages. I don't think that's legal, love. Can somebody get him a doctor? What? He's hearing voices in his head. Check his pocket. What? Check his pocket! Michelle's telly got broken. By you? Well, no, technically me and Craig. And then you got a replacement, didn't you? For Michelle! It was given to me, so it's mine. I thought you said you were skint. Well, I am. Now. Property's nine-tenths of the law. Look, morally, that telly is mine. Oh, 
Don't mention Miles and Steve McDonald in the same sentence. Excuse me? Are you calling my husband? You stuck-up, know-nothing mare. I've had toothbrushes in more culture than you. Oh, carry on. It's just chip paper in the window of life. The fact is, you're not taking this tally, and that is my final word. Oh, is it? Right. Right then. I'm taking this. Oh, no, no, you can't take that. I've just cracked level five. Ah. And you can crack level six when I get my telly back without a scratch. And you, you can stand there all superior, but we both know that my husband did not choose that globe. But yours did. <laughs> Steve! Do not speak to me. Oh, come on, Sal. I got caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. Oh, and I'm the devil, I suppose. Sally, do you have to be so childish? Triple chocolate design. Mm. Hey, where do you think you're going? Wait for a lie down. I've had an hard day. The bedroom door is closed to you. The conservatory's that way. The best way of describing this dish...